Lifting to failure can have massive benefits. However, you have to do it the right way. Doing it the wrong way makes it equally as negative. In other words, if you do it wrong, not only will you not get results, you'll quickly overtrain or fry your CNS, or at least they'll feel that way. Okay, so what are the training to failure tips? Well, from my experience, you wanna cut your volume or sets down to about one third or one fourth. So in other words, if you normally do three sets, do one set. If you normally do four sets, do one or maybe two sets, probably closer to one. Here's the second piece of advice. Keep the reps a bit higher. Low reps to failure with low volume or low sets, not typically enough to stimulate muscle growth. It's also safer to go with lighter weight. Here's the third tip. Failure means perfect form starts to break down, not you can't move the bar anymore. That's not failure, that's just terrible lifting. So again, lifting to failure, incredibly beneficial, but you have to do it right. Were you, um, when you wrote the MAPS Anabolic Advanced and you programmed the failure weeks like that, was this like the research you were reading when when you started, to, that came together for you? I mean, this that was the first time that we'd ever programmed that in a program. I knew, I remember when you were testing it out last year, almost a year before, it's been a while now, um, and you were talking about this. Was that something that you hadn't really experimented with in the past with like really starting to manipulate the, the you know, alternating the yeah. weeks like that with the intensity and the volume? Well, because Mike Mentzer was a big part of what you initially read about, right? And then, but the, the recovery part wasn't really uh, a factor. No, right? well, so, okay, so if we take a step back, right? So I uh, learned about the original, I guess, failure training type concept Early on, I was actually quite lucky. Um, I want to say I was 15 or 16, and um, in the back of uh, Muscle and Fitness Reflex, one of those, those bodybuilding magazines, I saw the cover of a book called Heavy Duty, and Mike Menser was on it. He had this really square-looking, like, impressive physique. And so, you know, 15, 16-year-old, I'm like, he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. So I bought that book. And it was the first time I'd heard a bodybuilder attempt to use scientific theory in relation to uh, muscle adaptation or growth or what happens to your body. And it did make logical sense. Now he didn't come up with the idea. It was Arthur Jones, who was a professor, a scientist who had described this. And the theory basically was that you, you just need to send the muscle building signal and anything above and beyond that uh, causes uh, overtraining or just dips into your ability to recover and adapt. And so they said, all you need is one set to absolute failure because when you fail, your body already gets that signal. Anything beyond that is unnecessary. And um, it made a lot of sense to me. And I tried it. Again, I think I was 15 or 16. Now, up until that point, I'd been working out since I was 14. And the way I trained was high volume, kind of Arnold style, bodybuilding style, from the, mainly from the, the Arnold Schwarzenegger's book of Encyclop uh, Encyclopedia Bodybuilding. And the switch, this is looking back, right? The switch was so novel that I had this huge response on my body. I remember my strength exploded. I think I gained like seven, eight pounds of lean body mass, which is a lot, especially for a kid. And then I was hooked, right? But then it eventually completely stopped working. I remember it worked super well in a short period of time, and then it totally stopped working. And then what M Mike Menser said to do at that point was to rest even longer in between workouts. Mm. So- it was the original workout was three days a week. You would go, um, it was like uh, legs, push and pull. Okay. And then when that stopped working, what he said to do was to, instead of taking a day off in between, to take two days off of between. And it got to the point where Mike Menser actually had clients. He would train once every other week because this is how he said he would get them to progress. It just didn't work like that at all. I mm -hmm. tried it, got no progress. didn't work. Eventually went back. And that was like the beginning of me experimenting with different types of theories. Um, now that was my first time experimenting with it. And since then I'd, ex I'd done so much experimentation with intensity and volume on myself, on clients, yeah. just throughout the years, there's been data that's been compiling throughout the years on failure training. The data is kind of weird. It's not conclusive either way. It does show, does seem to show that that volume reps, frequency also play a role in muscle building, not just intensity. So we know that uh, you know, pretty strongly. Also power lifters, Olympic lifters, strength athletes don't train that way. Um, and so there's, there's, there's some truth, but it's not the truth, right? There's, 
There's a lot of stuff in between. Novelty plays a role. Who knows? So through the years and looking at data and experimenting, I, I kind of figured out that it's about one third, one fourth the volume that going beyond technical failure, meaning your form breaks down, it, it's, it's too much. It's also high risk of injury. Mm -hmm. um, I also, even doing that, noticed that it would fry my body um, mm. quickly. So like within a month of doing that, it's like, I, I just, I, I had to take a break, even though I was doing such little volume. So that's where I com came up with kind of, that's how maps anabolic advance was created. Um, and that's why people get really good results from it. But failure training itself <clears throat> in a short period of time, if you apply it right, it's, you'll get the fastest, the fastest gains yeah. in a, a four week period through that than anything else. Well, the biggest thing I've found with it too, is what uh, the point that you made uh, in terms of it uh, being a bit more high risk and, and yeah. um, to, to be able to kind of um, stay ahead of that. And, and by, <clears throat> by going more of the high rep route, and this is something that I had to kind of experiment and play with when, when structuring uh, these, these focused type of, um, you know, one rep max for, for these kids going through this, this football program. And it was like, I, I didn't want, I, typically you do like the one rep max is like, this is like the standard for everything. And like, we kind of worked our way up to that, which I did still keep at the very end of the programming after the three months. But it's like to continuously test that would just fry them. Yeah. And it was just like, and then you're, you're dealing with that risk factor of like, Oh my God, you know, somebody it's just a higher chance of, of injury or something kind of giving away. So I added like at least uh, a five reps or, or yep. five to eight reps. And we we're going in that direction more which was a lot yeah. more managed. I, I just noticed, so for the for the injury issue, it's not that it's too heavy or something. Of course, the heavier the weight, the higher the risk of injury because if your form is off a little bit, you know, it, it could mean it, it could mean you really hurt yourself versus if it's if it's lighter and your form off, goes off. But failure training is injury prone because when you start to fatigue, which obviously going to failure means you're that's what you're going after, your body will start to revert to um form and technique to try to get the weight to move. Your body doesn't know I'm trying to do a perfect squat. It just knows I'm trying to lift something. Mm -hmm. And so when I get to that fatigue part, if I just, if I'm not, if I'm not really conscious of good form and technique and I don't have a good grasp of it, my body will do whatever the hell it needs to get the weight up. This is why you'll see people twisting and <clears throat> their hips will come out. Weird shit will happen. So it's very injury prone. Um, and then the higher reps for bodybuilding I just, if I did one set to failure of five reps, that's hard, but I don't build up the metabolic stress. Like if I did 12 reps to failure, right? So the volume's so low on the sets that the reps tend to need to be higher to get the pump and the metabolic type of, uh, of, of stress that I, I think is important for hypertrophy in particular. So, mm -hmm. so I think it's some of the worst messaging that has ever been perpetuated by the fitness space. Mm -hmm. I really do. I think, and I think so many people Agreed. gravitate towards it. Um, I spent at least a decade of my yeah. training career uh, thinking that that was what was ideal. A lot of the bodybuilding message is uh, built around that. Still to this day, when you you hear them, most of them will will tout that you know most people just can't take it to that intensity level. And there's this idea <laughs> that underfed like, or yeah, 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 exactly. There's no such thing as overtraining under only under eating mm. and. Just so, so you annoying. just get fat and overtrained. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I guess you just don't really realize, like uh, those people that that promote those messages don't realize what a genetic anomaly they are and what a factor anabolic steroids plays a totally. massive role. Totally. And mm -hmm. someone who has been on and off steroids for most of my life, uh, it's crazy that just because you're on anabolics, it means you can get away with it more, but totally. it's still not ideal. No, it's so it's so interesting why uh, ideal is still ideal. Yeah. You just get away with making more mistakes. Yeah, and I just it's crazy. Like when I when I figured out that you know th that this whole uh, volume, intensity, nutrition, and uh, stress was like this dance that you're always that you're always doing with your body, and that when you throttle down like that all the time, sure, there's, there can be a place for that where it could have value. But 
ninety percent of the time it's not. I was just gonna say, God, it's so funny you hit that. You said that number. If you were to look at, if all of us were to examine and look at uh, a person's, let's say one, two year, three year, let's say long term, right? long term training programming, it probably will look like ninety percent cruising, ten percent sprinting. Yes, totally. So I mean, only ten percent of the time should you really push it to sprint. The rest of the time, you're you're cruising. Anything you change the ratio, 80, 20, 70, 30, whatever, you're you're asking for trouble. You're not going to get there any faster either. It's so funny because you mm -hmm. will I guarantee you this will be clipped out somewhere and somebody will share it with some meathead or some trainer yeah. that's all roided out, and then they'll they'll be, oh, they're just a bunch of pussies. You know, they don't want to sweat, <laughs> they don't want to train hard or what that's just like, no, you moron. There's a much easier way to get fucking jacked and not have to train that way. And it really it took me a long time to figure that out. And it's so funny because it's like, oh my God, it's actually doesn't have to be that difficult. No. And when you learn that it's this like beautiful dance between stress, nutrition, recovery, volume, and intensity, you realize like that is like that's your nitrous button. That yes, of course, if you're in a, a drag race and you're you're neck and neck and you hit that button, you're gonna edge forward and and, and get a little more and win. But if you throttle on that all the time, your engine blows. Your engine yeah. blows. Yeah, and I, you know, I don't care. You're just you're not going to win the long race. And so, to run like that, and for so long, I was I was plateaued, and a lot of it had to do with just revving that engine Same. up too hard. And when I started to scale back on volume, scale back on all of a sudden, I started to build muscle, and it was like, oh my god, like. Mm -hmm. Crazy to think that it was, I was, but it was because the messaging, because uh -huh. that is what is promoted, the 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 hype and the the music behind the lifting, and it's like watching Ronnie Coleman before I go train every time, and just like not even, dude, it's in every direction. Yes, I mean you realize like even in the uh, the the cardio group class experience, yeah. it's intensity, it's it's loud music, it's everybody has to put hundred percent out, like. It was in the sports world for me. It was like every single workout was like you had to feel like you just got your ass kicked. Like that was like the mentality. All of us shared that. And it was like, man, I, c I can only imagine going back and just like working with my body and like how much further progress I would have got. A hundred better I would have been. A hundred percent. It's like it, when an athlete or a celebrity or a fitness influencer or whatever shares their workout or their programming. They're not sharing with you what they normally do. They're sharing with you the peak yeah. of what they normally do. When you watch exactly. a pro athlete train, what you're watching is probably like, oh, this is when it, nobody's going to record yeah. their normal their workout and post it. Yeah. Like, I don't talk about the fact that when I do yeah. pull-ups, this is a true story. It's not Instagram when movie. I, when I do pull-ups for a workout, bodyweight pull-ups, okay? I'm always hovering around 8 to 10. Today, I want to see how many I could do. 20. Yeah. So if somebody's like, how many pull-ups can you do? I'm not going to say eight to 10. It's just natural. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can do 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How yeah. often do I go hammer out 20 pull-ups? Never. Never. In fact, the same a lot thing with finance, right? Your yeah. best month. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How much do you make? Yeah, they're yeah, going to pick that yeah, one yeah, month. Yeah. That the they biggest month I ever had in my life. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, and then the multiply standard. by 12. Yeah, you know what I'm so, it's so true. Uh, so that, but, the, but then, you know, uh, the consumer sees this. Like, oh, that's how I'm going to get that way is I got to train like that all the time. Not even the the genetically gifted anomalies, not even the people that don't represent most people train like that all the time. They train like that, you know, eight weeks, 12 well, weeks. Well, back to the 90-10, the yeah. like you're saying, yeah. and we said that that's a great rule. If, if, uh, if a race car track was a good representation of life, life is full of of these hairpin turns and, and, and figure eights and heart. And you've got one straight away. That's it. That's yeah. it. And every time you lap around, there's a, there's a, there's a small stretch. You should throttle down right. to, to maximize winning this race. The rest of the time yeah. they're, it, they're just turns and they're harder turns and other turns. And there's no reason for you to be <laughs> throttling that hard. You should be trying to minimize that, to balance that. It's to, chess. Yeah. Yes. And 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 yet we have your your we're just throw and all so all I was doing in my twenties was just what's been out what's been out what's <laughs> it's been such out such a great it's visual I just see like the 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 whole Instagram as being like the fans that finally get to see you like, yeah, yeah, all right, yeah keep going yeah, and yeah, then yeah. you're back on the yeah. like spin it by out. yourself spin it out. like going on, yeah. <laughs> oh wait there's the fans oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey fans yeah. hey look at what I just did I, I, in fact it, it, this is how bad it is what I just said about people posting their workouts it gets even worse. 
people don't actually even post their best workouts. They post their best workouts plus, you know, 50% more. Yeah. I mean, I know people personally, uh, yeah. personally, well, they'll list their workouts and then I'll know their workout partners and their workout partners will be like, he doesn't do oh, that. They show you, two reps. You remember it? when we used <laughs> to, workout. remember when we used to see Joe Donnelly and when we first met Oh him, yeah, and he's like, he posted you know, 56 40 six set, yeah. sets, bro. <laughs> What the fuck are you doing, his tra- guys? His training partner's like, dude, he did 12. Yeah. You know? He doesn't have to do it on 56 sets. And, he, because, and it's so funny because it, it's uh, it's weird how it works, right? Because you see someone, because nonetheless, the guy's impressive, right? Yeah. He, he's strong. He looks amazing. Big, sure. big jack dude, right? And you're a young kid and you go to, li- and you just, you you die at one-tenth of that <laughs> volume and you're like, this is why I'm not there yet. I yeah. just got to keep pushing yeah. and like maybe one day I'll be able to finish hey, this workout. You said some about, uh, you know, anabolic steroids and it allows you to get away with more. A lot of people don't realize this with androgens. They do make your muscles more resilient. Recovery is faster. You're kind of turbocharged, right? They also turbocharge and make the CNS more resilient. A lot of people don't know that. They affect your central nervous system uh, in very powerful ways. In fact, in fact, in, in, in athletes in strength sports where it's common to use anabolic steroids, know this. There are specific anabolic steroids that athletes will use precisely for their central nervous system stimulating effects. For example, uh, power lifters. Mm-hmm. There is a steroid Look this up for anybody who thinks this is cool. You can look this up. It's a weird name. They're called Check Drops, C H E Q U E Drops. It's a type of anabolic steroid. I was reading about this the other day. It's got very little value for like muscle building or hypertrophy. It's very toxic or whatever. But it has this this uh, effect where you take it and an hour later you're an aggressive animal. And so powerlifters, it's a favorite steroid among powerlifters before huh. me. Or for MMA fight, MMA athletes will use it before they'll fight or boxers before they fight because of its CNS uh, effects. Um, there's other anabolic steroids like Anadrol, also very well known for this, where you'll take it for five days and you're significantly strong. You didn't build any muscle in five days. It was a, So not only do these athletes it's who are genetically werewolf. gifted recover faster and can deal with more, but then they're on high levels of androgens, which make their central nervous system more resilient to the yeah. beatdowns of the workouts and stress and shit like that. Pretty wild when hmm. you think about it. The funny part is, though, I got an opportunity, uh, you know, during that little three and a half, four year run or whatever it was when I was, uh, you know, chasing plastic trophies. And I got to coach a lot of these bodybuilders, bikini athletes, men's physique athletes. And one of my favorite things to, to be able to show them is to like, balance their recovery and yeah. scale back their intensity and volume. Nobody showed them that. And like, I know. like blow their mind. I know. And, and pull back the steroids. Low, like, low hanging fruit. I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to pull back these steroids. We're going to take off a day in the week. Now you're going to do, you know, five less sets every workout. It's like, I don't want you train to failure except for when I tell you, we'll probably do it once every other week or so. Like it was just like, I remember like them being so shocked by like, are you sure? I'm just to trust the process. Yeah. You'll see. And, and even bodies, on so. anabolics, they were seeing incredible results by pulling back on the volume. Totally. So I just think that we're 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 misled on how value and and by the way, we're saying that it has value, and I do think it has value. And yes, ten percent of the time you'll find me doing something like that. But you could literally never train to failure. Yes, and build an incredibly strong, amazing physique. Hundred percent. Yeah. I now I train to failure now on average. I would say a total of, uh, let me see, if it's uh, probably five weeks out of the year. Not in a row either. It's not five weeks in a row out of the year. It's like a week here, a week there. And if I were to add it up, that's it. So how many weeks are there in a year? I don't know. But that's that's about as you much. You know, back to like the race car analogy again too. It's like the guy who decides like, you know, the fastest I could take these corners at is like 90 miles an hour in this race car. So he drives the whole race at 90 miles an hour. The other guy is throttling all the time. And spinning off. Yeah, and spinning off. He's still going to lose. He's still going to win. Or the other analogy, we've seen this in golf. Like there's guys that like just... 
they hit their seven iron so sweet, but they can't drive straight and stuff like that. So they play the whole course with one club, the seven iron, and they actually shoot their best golf because they're not trying to crush the ball all the time. Yeah, it reminds me they're of They're just time. trying to line up their next shot. It reminds me of when I beat you guys at Top Golf. <laughs> Stop. That is, that is You're almost. almost off the- <laughs> hey, that's almost Blast exactly me. what happened. You remember that? Yeah. You mean, guys were blasting it. Of course it we remember And that. missing it, and I was just pop. Pop, the, pop. Dude, the Carnival King yeah, strikes yeah. again. Can yeah, we make we, him a shirt of this? It's Carnival King. Can we oh, have that? Yeah. Hey, Carnival I King. That. I, that, you That's are the great. You well, are it the makes carnival. me sound like a carny. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not too fan of the carny. <laughs> hey, did you guys see? I was listening this morning on uh, Dave Ramsey. Somebody called. I love listening to his callers. He gets some of the greatest callers. And he had this caller call in. Guys, uh, I think just about to turn 50 years old. And him and his wife. Uh, he was, he's his, I haven't heard, I haven't met somebody or heard somebody that tell the story that this happened to them, but you guys, are you guys familiar with people that like go in with like their whole work, uh, and everybody buys lottery tickets, like yeah, I know a huge lottery yeah. and like they all, they all uh, put like a thousand dollars in. And so then they end up getting like, you know, Hey, you know, if you're real quick, if you're the boss and all your staff buys a ticket, you're really hoping they don't win. Cause you're like, fuck, yeah, everyone's yeah, going to quit at the same time. <laughs> My whole staff is gone. I never thought, I bet you, you know what, since you, that's such a good point that I bet never does the boss probably put that together. Yeah, no. That's probably all the employees. Unless the co- boss is in on it too. Yeah, I was going to say, he better put his share in there yeah. so he gets a piece. Well, that's, or I'm, I'm saying that it's like all the employees or they don't even involve the bosses. Yeah. They probably all go like, let's uh-huh. put our money together so we can fucking leave this place. <laughs> hey, what's that scene from, <laughs> hey, that mutiny. One of the funniest scenes in any TV show was Reno 911 where they all thought they yeah. won the lot. Oh my that god! So hilarious. Where they're all walking in one by one, talking shit because they thought they won. Like one of the dudes comes in a fur coat. Fuck yeah, you, mother- you know he's talking yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah. But 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 there was Take a misprint. Job and so then they all realized it was bad and they put it down. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. And it takes oh. off the <laughs> then the next person comes in. They all <laughs> have just, to like uh, wait it out. One of the and, chicks walks in. Yeah. and She's hammered and shit yeah. and on drugs. It's the so irony cool. though, this guy who won actually said uh, he was talking to Dave and he said that he, he I, mean, I love my job so I don't want to quit my job. But he after so they they did that with a bunch of people at work. I don't know how many. He didn't say how many but a, a, a bunch of people at work all went in on it they won after taxes and splitting it all up he still walked away with 22 million yeah wow and yeah he was asking him and they and so he's That's asking dave plot. if he thought that they shouldn't tell him he's like we haven't told anybody he's like we've literally i think he's the name he, like, he didn't even tell his teenage didn't kids. tell his didn't kids yeah. didn't tell any of their friends their parents they didn't tell anybody huh. and he's just like you know we just uh you know he said he did a bunch of like reading after he won he like went and researched like you know what happens how many people go bankrupt after winning the lotto and what the top reasons why and one of the top reasons why uh, aside from the fact i think the top reason is People that get a windfall of money like that, and we see this with athletes, and uh, it's just they didn't build the behaviors around having that kind of money. Yeah, it'd be like snapping my fingers and making an obese person lean. Right, and then thinking they're going to be able to keep it off. Yeah, and then they'll go back to their lifestyle. That's right, because they didn't learn those behaviors. Same thing goes uh, with money. So I thought that was really funny that – this guy is he's calling in and he's asking he's smart. he shouldn't I know I thought so well too. thought out I was thinking mm-hmm. about it like okay if I if you he respects won, the power of the money yeah if you won that much money uh, one uh who who do you tell or not tell and then what do you do with what do you well do with you that? guys would know right away stick with 22 man this is a good number too. I would so, tell you guys yeah. right away uh my wife I don't and then my my yeah, I would you I would because I want my one fourth because we've already agreed that everything that we, we did? do together. Yeah, <laughs> I want the one fourth right away. Hey. Don't matter where it came. I told from. you guys what I would do. I'd come in and be like, uh, we're going to Chili's for lunch on me. <laughs> What's up with Sal? What's going on with Sal? No, I got uh, so many coupons now. I would um uh, you know what my dream is if I want seriously, I, I don't think anything would change for work or anything like that. I'd still come here. I love what I do. Um what one thing would change is I would try to to buy a piece of land where I could have my parents, my wife's Ooh, mom. I like that. I like that. You know, maybe some, maybe my siblings would be up to them, but definitely my parents and my wife's mom would live on like like the gemstones, right? Have a piece of land <laughs> yeah. with houses. I do think that and would then be just one be of the like coolest. you guys can retire here. We'll all live together. I do think that would be yeah. one of the coolest ways to do something for the family without like doing something for the family is to buy, yeah. you know, a hundred acres and have four or five houses yeah. on it and it's hey it's you guys can live there for free. it's yours to live it free if yeah, you want I like and hope that they- and then put a school on that that uh, oh. you know we hire like specific uh people to run and and, and again yeah that that's kind of where my brain is these days is like how can we kind of have our own a- autonomy in terms of like you know with the kids like how can they get how can they learn um ways to be self-sufficient um 
uh, to, you know, music, to, to learn like all these things I wish I'd have learned in school. Sure. I never got taught, you know, and like how to manage money, how to like mm -hmm. finance, all that stuff. Like I would, I would go all in on all that kind of yeah. stuff. I want to know what Doug would do. Cause you're the biggest tight ass out of all of us. <laughs> so, yes, you are. I don't know if I am. Yes, you are. For sure. You are. I go to Vegas. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Let it ride on black 24. Yeah, 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 Let's yeah. go. All of it. All of it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I am kind of tight that way. Uh, for me, you know, a, a nice house would definitely be, uh, uh, like a custom that you built. Very custom, yes. I've been thinking of a place for probably over 10 years. <laughs> and it's been changing in my mind ever since that time. But <laughs> yeah. I put it, I put it the paper and then actually build the thing. Um, but for me, yeah, investments, I would definitely diversify that. Yeah. I would not uh I would definitely not go out and just spend it on wild things or buy things buy things and yeah. I buy experiences yeah. I don't yeah. think you know, travel that type of thing I don't think Doug's tight I think Doug's wise uh, well I mean he, like, he knows what he likes what he doesn't like yeah. I think people make a mistake when they well, it's a big mistake when you have money and you don't truly know what really is going to bring you value well, do you, and so do you, you spend it on a bunch of do shit do you believe that about yourself do you not do you not think that there's a little bit of you that is a little bit of a tight ass oh definitely okay see, I come by it naturally if, my if parents can, no but that's not the same though uh, no no so no. I'm very careful with my money that's different so, yeah. so I'm very careful he's with not my a money. miser however not to say a miser he's a bit of a tight he's ass he's also very generous though I've seen him be very generous yeah. he buys shit for people that he doesn't need to all the time and takes care of bills and yeah so uh, you know I, I don't think a tight ass to me when I hear a tight ass it's somebody that's got a bad relationship with money in the reverse. That's what I think of. Oh, I don't think like that necessarily. I don't think you of it. Think I don't of, know, think of it as a negative. I don't even think of it as a negative. <laughs> I don't even think of that as like a negative thing. I just okay. think if you were to, if there was a spectrum of like tight ass is on one side and, and over the top frivolous is on the other side. Loose ass you're, you're, I'm more towards the tight ass. ass. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, okay. you're, 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 you're fair, fair evaluation. <laughs> no, I'm, very, I'm extremely careful. Yeah. Uh, Cause I do know that it can go very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Easy come, easy go, if yeah. you will. Um, and I grew up with parents that grew up right after the, the depression. Yeah. And they were so careful. I mean, uh, yeah. if you compare me with my parents, I'm like this crazy uh, over the top spender compared oh, to they, them. Uh, yeah. But it served them well. Yeah. I saw my parents. My dad was a junior high school principal and they were very careful with their money. He retired when I was a junior in high school. Oh, wow. From school. He did some other things afterwards. Some like he was a, a builder on the side, and he did a remodeling company for a while. And then he loved video editing. Funny how I got that. That's so uh, good. And so he did some of that for my brother in law's company. But they traveled. They traveled the world yeah. on on not much, but they were so careful with their money. And then uh, they owned a home. And then they had a couple of rental properties. And uh, yeah, that's really well, impressive. That's great. Yeah. And when my my dad passed away. Uh, he left my mom flush with cash, no needs for any help whatsoever outside That's from awesome. the family and that type of thing. So I have that naturally inside of me. However, I would do things that my dad would never do. Yeah. I mean, if I see something I want, I'm going to buy the nicest I can buy. Like yeah. your espresso machine. Yeah. That yeah. Thing is Rolls or, Royce, or a samurai sword. I mean, see, he's not like that much of a, t like there's obviously, he just he's knows, not a miser. I know that. He knows what, what's, what's valuable. But I would him, think you know? if we had a, spe if we were all, if the, the four of us were on a spectrum and I would put him on the furthest left of that direction. Probably. That's what I mean by that. And I don't like mean it in a negative way because I don't think any of us are on the other extreme I'm negatively. Big, I'm not a big spender either. Yeah. You're the next closest. Yeah. I mean, yeah. but that, that's which not, is why you defend him in that because I know you see a little. <laughs> well, bit no, that. I just think I like him. Th I'll spend money if I want something, but I just don't want a lot of things. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. just a lot of things I don't necessarily care about. But I grew up in a similar uh, way where I learned those skills through watching my parents. Um, I mean, my parents are obviously very, very poor. <clears throat> my dad, till this day, you know what he gets? He's, he gets excited to tell me if he saves fifteen dollars on tires. He did this the other day. Still, so, he, and it, so he, he starts off. He always starts off the story like this. Those fucking guys try to rip me off over at the dealership. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. You know how much they try to charge me for tires? Yeah. And then he'll give me the number and they'll be like, I found them online for this much. Yeah. I'm like, you save fifteen. Get, you ain't getting over on me. Well, you save you save sixty dollars on all your tires. Yeah. You believe that? I'm like, okay, <laughs> no, it's so funny because <laughs> my mom, she loves saving so much. Yeah. If she gets a bargain, she's just so happy. Yeah. She her favorite place to shop is the Goodwill. Oh, and God. they have these big bins oh, and she'll go. You, she, your, your mom and my mom would be best friends. She's 91. And she goes down there, you know, she gets dressed up and goes down to the Goodwill and she finds all this stuff. Some, some of it's, you know, expensive name brand stuff. And she buys shoes and whatever else. She told me 
the other day that she had a hundred pairs of shoes. <laughs> <laughs> like Imelda Marcos. Wow. I was like, Mom, you never even wear those. He goes, you know how much I spent on those? <laughs> <laughs> Each one was a deal. I bet, I bet she paid for 100 pairs of yeah. shoes. She probably paid $50. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I love Dude, that. Dude, my mom shots a place called The Bargain Barn. Still? <laughs> is she still? She doesn't still do that, does she? I know you. She told- still fucking does that. Really? Yes. Oh, that's so great. I swear to God, she would that's just, so great. just dumpster dive, you know, and, and find things and like... And you know it's one of those things. It's like it's a pride thing for her that she can find like that treasure. Oh, yeah. she out loves of it. The it's trash. like a treasure hunt. I, yeah, absolutely. I, that's why I'm like repulsed by it. You yeah. know, like I just I went in the opposite. Like I don't again. Like I don't spend outside my means ever. Like yeah. it, I, it's always within my means. I but, think we're but all. I like just that, I right? just want the thing that I want to be high, high, high quality. You know, like I'm so not into like the cheap save a yeah. fucking buck. I mean. I like I'll, I will make money so I can get the thing. He's right. I mean, look at the helmet that he just got. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's, that's the Cadillac of. Uh, yeah, did someone Star make Wars that for helmets. you? How did yeah, you get I that? I make it for me. Yeah. Oh really? <laughs> Is it was it a listener or someone you actually sought out? That does no, it? I yeah hey, I just looked it up. Can you tell me? I'm out. gonna ask you a question. Yeah, I yeah. want the truth though. What? Did you try it on? Fuck yeah! It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> did you go? My hey, nose was hey, kind of too close hey, to it. It was like smashing. Hey, hold on. Second question. Be honest. Did you have sex in it? Is it, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> is it yet. is it really expensive? Uh, no, it was oh. like, no, it's just like it, like two hundred bucks. Or something. Okay, <laughs> I mean it's kind of expensive yeah, for, yeah. Uh, for yeah. a plastic, helmet. right? <laughs> yeah, a plastic helmet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm ready for cosplay, you guys. Woo. <laughs> yeah, no, it, nothing. Okay, so again, everybody obviously has the, the conservative with it. Not a. Is there like one thing that you would say that'd be a little absurd or a little like obnoxious or something that would be splurging? Like, is it if you were to, would it, what would oh. it, yeah, like there's something either a thing or a service like you would because I, I I know for me it would be a service. Like there's a service that I would I would pay for. It's a little bit obnoxious or absurd, but I would be like if I got that kind of money, uh, home chef. Well, yeah, I don't think that's absurd. I think that's that's really up because I would do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's like I've caused a necessity. That. Yeah, I yeah, would yeah, do a home yeah. chef. Yeah. I mean, we've talked about putting our money together. Like, hey, we could probably hire a chef. What do you guys think we should do? <laughs> so that's yeah. not that's not like that's a definite. Right? Well, what is it then? Um, I would want fresh sheets every day on my bed. I love getting into a bed of fresh sheets out of the out of the dryer. And have a service where I don't have to make my bed or anything like that. That I I I freaking just get to climb in like <laughs> hotel feeling. That is the weirdest yeah. thing. You know what though? That's reminds me of like doable, yeah. Adam. Yeah, it's so doable. doable. Why, I don't just, think, just but it's tell, a, it's a little absurd. Just tell your just tell your wife you want to do that. No, I see. I don't want her to have to do it. Right? I want her. She doesn't have to do it. Like we and we already. Get, I get fresh sheets once a week, but I will want them daily. Every day I want to get in What's that, that downy like, fresh bear. Like, dude, Ooh. there's something. Oh, yeah. the, the, no, I mean, I don't know if it's because I got like huggins, sensitive huggins, skin or yeah. what it is, but like getting into a bed that feels like it just came out of the dryer and has that it's smell. It's a nice feeling. Oh, it's a yeah, it's yeah, an yeah, amazing yeah. feeling. It's weird how much of, the, of these things nice could be tied to something sheets. when you were a kid. Because I guarantee it has something to do with Oh, I'm, we, for sure. We probably had, had the same pair of sheets growing shitty up. Shitty sheets, and we well, I washed our sheets like once a year or something <laughs> like that. It's like <laughs> yeah. disgusting. Yeah, you, know yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you can see your body print. Yeah, yeah, dude. It was definitely yeah. not. So, hey, did you, that bear that you just talked about, that freaking snuggles, whatever the hell Yeah, 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 yeah. Did, did it just me or did you just want to kick the shit out of I the I just one? wanted to punt it. Yes. Yeah. What is it about that why. annoying I, ass bear? I, I Every time I saw that. that commercial as a kid. They're trying to make it all cute. wanted to beat him up. Yeah. Jeez. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> to pop its head off. That's how Justin and I connect yeah, yeah, over yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, we used to rip heads off Barbie. <laughs> Today's program giveaway is MAPS Powerlift. If you want to win that program, this is how you enter. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it, and then subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We also got a sale going on right now. Maps Bands is half off, and the Harden Gainer bundle of programs is half off. You can find them both by clicking on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. Okay, so I'm going to take a, a, a turn here. I want to. I went on Seed's website to look up the science behind their probiotic so mm-hmm. I can communicate it better. So I stand behind the thing. I always say it's the world's best probiotic. And it for sure, for sure. Well, for they sure. have the world's best scientists working on it. So it's, I would imagine it's that. on another level. So I'm going to cover a few things about them that are different than any other probiotic. They have, there's two capsules within one capsule. Okay. The, the outer capsule is a barrier to oxygen, moisture, and heat, which is what keeps the probiotics alive at room temperature. So if you take a probiotic, 
you either have to refrigerate it or it's room temperature and it dies. And then the refrigerator one, as soon as it hits your gut, it's dead anyway, right? right. So you get you get some benefit from dead probiotics, but you get more benefit from live probiotics. They've created this. The inner capsule uh, creates a barrier to help it move through the body. The outer capsule um, it stops it from getting destroyed in the gut and also pro provides it with prebiotics. So these mm. are... This is a, the outer capsules made with compounds that feed the probiotics as they're released to help keep them alive. Hmm. And it's the only probiotic that's been shown to make it to the colon. So it goes all the way so through. It's double it, capsule. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And so it gets to. It's the only probiotic to have shown that? It, to, to, they test it specifically to show that it doesn't get destroyed in the gut, but makes it all the way to your, your colon. Interesting. And actually seeds where you need to. This is why it's the, like I said, this don't is the they one have that, some kind of like simulator? They do. Yeah. They I do. would love to see that in person. They have a specific machine that simulates the, in, the gastro uh, process and they, you can watch the capsule, make yeah, it all the way through. Yeah. Well, they'll, they'll put other probiotics to show you. I remember yeah. when we first now we reached the colon. started working with them and how <laughs> excited you were about it, which I, sometimes I just like, whatever, Sal gets excited about a lot of things with supplements. And so I kind of didn't like think too much about it. It just hurts my feelings. But <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to defend you here, though. I mean, like, uh, what I, when I really knew like how good they were was – when other people who've been either taking probiotics for a really yeah. long, like they take it and the feedback I get is the, is like the, oh my God, oh my God, like I can tell a difference with this probiotic. I've been taking probiotics for years mm -hmm. and like nothing is like the seed. I've had hand, like at least a handful of people message me that and tell me like how- I know, I wonder how many people have taken probiotics. Like, ah, it does nothing, did nothing for me. You know, it's because they just didn't have the right deliveries. <laughs> I've uh, taken a million and one probiotic company. Can you, can you overdo it, Sal? Can you- Of course. So you can, yeah. Of okay, course, so, yeah. so overpopulate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so what's the what's the what is there? How do we find out the right balance? Depends for on the survivability, where it reaches in the body and the individual. But typically, you're looking at I think 50 million to 100 million is the number of uh, bacteria that you're looking for in a capsule. Some people go much higher, but I think that's because most of the bacteria gets destroyed in their gut, so they have to go so high to elicit some type of a positive effect. But then children, you don't want to give them something that's got 50 million, you know, whatever. I, I remember the, the, the yeah, unit of measurement. Number. Yeah. We'll have to write down a bunch of these questions because, so we, you know, I told you that Katrina and I are going through and renewing all the contracts for next year and we just did seed. And I actually requested to have uh, one of the doctors back on because it's been so long since we've done that. And I would love yeah, to do good. like a really deep dive on the probiotics. And just uh, so I'd like to make a list of questions like that and hear them explain everything to us. Cause I think we did that when we first met them, but that was like three years ago now. Mm. Has it been three, four? Dog? Like it's that. been a long time, right? Mm -hmm. When we had the, uh, the seed doctor come on here, that mm -hmm. was a long oh, time yeah. ago. It's been a good three years. I At think. least that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, speaking of beneficial bacteria. So uh, I don't know if you guys have known. So we've been working with z right? So Z for people that know z is a probiotic drink where the bacteria have been modified, literally gene modified to break down acetaldehyde, which is one of the negative byproducts of alcohol. Acetaldehyde is often responsible for the shitty feelings that people have when they drink alcohol um, because your liver processes it, but some gets released in the gut or gets turned gets from alcohol. It goes through the gut and then it can cause things like headache. You can feel inflamed digestive issues, that kind of stuff. So z has genetically modified bacteria that when you take it and then drink, these bacteria break down the acetaldehyde into components that are just not going to cause any problems. Hmm. Um, I don't know if you guys have noticed this. This is how big of an impact z is having because they're slowly like really taking over. It's one of those products where they don't put a ton of money in advertising, but because of word of mouth, more and more people are like, whoa, this shit is crazy. It really works really well. Are you guys noticing all the the supplements now that are coming out? Oh, that talk about so many competitors. Yeah, I was gonna, yeah. acetaldehyde. Was this breaks down acetaldehyde. Yeah, now they they have a patent though, right? You cannot make this. Yeah. Only Zbiotics has this bacteria that can do this. Everybody else will use herbs and compounds to support yeah, the try liver, and mimic it to try to 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 work with acetaldehyde. But it's not your liver's inability. I know. To break I don't it know down. if this is a good the OG. Yes. I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing because I feel like, unfortunately, the average consumer has no idea. Has no idea. Yeah, no. 
they hear something like this, they hear some of the same words getting thrown around and they go, oh yeah, I tried some product like that. Like I've had that happen already with family and friends. I'm like, oh, you have to do, this. oh no, I've, no, I've tried that. It doesn't, yeah. that, that shit doesn't no, work. It's kind of like, like the red no, no, no. light therapy too. I, you know, I've exactly. Noticed, yeah. Right. You have yeah. somebody who's gone out and bought some cheap one or yeah. something like that. Yeah. And they're just like, oh, like, that's stupid. It doesn't work. It's like, oh man, yeah. that's a, that's a, I mean, you obviously uh, we're all pro free market. Yeah. And so I'm. No, I'm, what, I'm, what other products try to do is they try to remedy the after effects of exposure to high levels of acetaldehyde uh, in the gut. So they'll, they'll put detoxifiers in there to help with the liver. You got to hydrate yourself, electrolytes. Oh, here's some antioxidants, right? So what they're trying to do is put the fire out. What Zbiotics does is it prevents the fire from starting in the first place. There's nothing, there is nothing on the market like Zbiotics because it's patented. It is a patented probiotic strain that they create, they genetically modified yep. to do precisely what I'm talking about. And you cannot copy this. They're protected by a patent. So- there's nothing that's out there. Yeah, don't like spend this. money the knockoffs. Totally, totally. Yeah. Hey, what do you? What is? Um, if my cousin has a kid, that kid is what to me in my family? Second cousin? Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. I think so. My second cousin? Yeah, your first cousin, second cousin? Yeah, is my first cousin or, or first a, cousin once removed? Your, or your like kissing that? cousin? Is I always <laughs> want to. Be, the, <laughs> Why'd you look at me? <laughs> whoa, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> whoa, 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 guy! I mean, say Sicilians, you know what I'm talking about. So my my second cousin, you look familiar. Is that's why you're attractive? Oh God, dude, it's wrong. Sorry, just wrong. a real hey, Rudy hater story. That's, no, I'm just that's kidding. Wrong. That's let wrong. me make the case. No, no, I'm just sorry. Joking. Okay, second cousin. Yeah. My, I was talking to Gross. my second cousin. He's only like a, in his mid twenties right now, early mid, early to mid like twenty four ish, I think he is, and uh, just had his his first baby um, with his with his wife, and she's only twenty two, I believe. So they're really young. And I was talking to him yesterday, checking up on him, seeing how things are going. So with that, and he said something that I thought was unique because I think we've shared this before. And I'm I'm curious to if you've either read uh, research or if you have like some sort of an evolutionary theory behind it. So is uh, the the one I asked him, you know, what's the you know greatest part? He's like, you know, my my love for my wife is radically changed. Like. I look at her so different now than what I did before. And I totally can relate to that. Yeah. Like it was such a, Katrina and I had, uh, had such a great relationship at Bond. We've been together for a long time. Um, you know, we were together for a decade before we even had a kid, right? So we, we've, we've got a great foundation. Um, and introducing a child into that Com like radically changed my love for her. It was, it was wild and, and unexpected. Right, like I didn't think that I would have this, or you didn't even know that it would feel that way. Yeah, like, or I, I didn't know that like, would have, like, yeah, I didn't know what if, like, you, I couldn't try and imagine that, or yeah. even know what that would feel like. It was so unique, right? You, you know, <clears throat> and I guess what I, I, I guess as a as a father or a husband, you know, I guess there's something with like, okay, obviously there's this love that you never thought you could have before once you have children, which everybody here could relate to, and then to see your partner take care of that that thing that is a part of you i guess is it, it has to be like it because it's an extension of you yeah and you, it's almost like you get an outside view like of them taking care of a part of it's, you it's you know such it's like a, it's such a weird thing because mm -hmm. uh evolutionarily speaking i mean it makes sense right otherwise the species wouldn't even exist we wouldn't survive if we didn't have those feelings <clears throat> but uh it's counter to your own survival meaning if you have a baby for most of human history, it's a burden. You got to feed this 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 creature that can't do anything. Okay, ba human babies are are literally worthless <laughs> for a long time. It's not like a, like a giraffe or a a gazelle. Like they they can run almost immediately. Um, human babies are a fetus for a long time, so they're almost a burden. And then for the man, evolutionarily speaking, the baby is a burden, but so is the partner. Because she's not able to do a goddamn thing for a while either. And she's got to breastfeed and be connected to this baby. So now you're the hunter. Sorry, this is back when men, you know, were, were hunters. You uh, you got to find food for you, for a ba your wife, and your baby now. So you just, you know, tripled your, the, your, your responsibilities right out the gates. So in order to continue the species, we have to have this incredible drive. In connection. So I don't know. I, I, it's got to come from something like that, but I, I would say, um, try this, 
try hating someone that genuinely loves your kids. It's impossible. Hmm. Mm. It's hard. Mm -hmm. You can't do it. You can't. You know, they say that, that that's a lot of times what heals uh, like a, 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 a poor relationship with like a parent. Of course. Because now you see them as a grandmother loving, <laughs> loving your child. And they're like or way better with it. Yes. Yeah. And they're way. And it's like, it, I've, I've heard of the, like cases like that where it completely heals a, 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 a wounded parent. You could be the, you could be, I could, you could totally annoy me. I don't mm -hmm. like you, whatever for, and that's true. I still won't like you, but if I see you genuinely love my kids and treat them well, it's impossible for me to hate you. How can I, I hate you? Do you, you think mm -hmm. the, the, uh, reverse is also true? Like, let's say you take that same scenario where you have a, a, a parent who you don't have a good relationship and they, uh, they don't, like love your child oh, or they don't, they don't, or they don't make effort towards your kid. Oh, I would a, imagine that would drive a, oh, come oh, on, yeah. dude. So, drive a steak, a steak even more. Right. Oh, man. I mean, obviously if they mistreat them, but even to just not want to love them as, as much would probably yeah. make that. You know, you know, what's funny is that, um, cause I've always loved kids. I'm the oldest of four, I had lots of little cousins. I was always put in charge of watching them. So I had a lot of training, I guess. And I just love babies, love kids, love babies. Anytime I go to a party, or it, like, let's say I went to a family party or a friend party where people don't know me, right? So I go to like a friend's party. I would always, you know, how people are attracted to the pets, like the dog or the cat. I was always attracted to the kids and you would always see me holding kids or playing with kids. And the, whoever I was, didn't matter where I was, they didn't know me. As soon as people saw me with the kids, and it wasn't like I did it on purpose. Everybody there was like, he's the greatest. Oh my God, I love him. And now as a father, <laughs> I realize this. Yeah. If somebody came to my family party that I didn't know, and I saw them interacting with my kids in a very positive way. Yeah. I wouldn't help but like them. You know, it, it's like, weird because it's uncommon. Yeah, you know, yeah, and I think true. yeah, and you notice that too. Like, yeah, I used to get that. It's like you just pay attention, to kids, acknowledge them, and and you know, like trying to interact with them. Like getting a guy, especially to like interact yeah. with kids, it's like a rare thing. Oh yeah, you should. See, there's, that, there's that that Family Guy. There's a Family Guy episode where Peter takes Stewie to the park. And then Stewie yeah. poops himself. Yeah. So he like puts him down to change his diaper, and all the moms there are like, oh, "It's a dad. He's changing a diaper." And it's like playing like this Dude, dramatic music. This is like you, the you have to do the little like the, the least amount the bar's of effort. Low. The very, yeah, bar is very low. Yeah. I know, so, I like, you see oh, that we had champion. we had somebody in our forum who commented. We had that discussion yeah. the other day, and uh, they said Jeff. They I forget dad. Jeff. I forget Jeff's last name, but he's in our forum, and he was actually the, the a reverse situation, right? That which is super rare. Which was Where mom left. Mom left, and he actually raised raised his son by himself yeah, like that, wow. and it was early too. I think he said five months or five years. Good man. Yeah. Yeah. Good man. Yeah. No, super, super Dude, impressive. Speaking of kids, my daughter, my baby daughter, my 10 month old daughter, this is right around the age, this right around 10 months, I'd say to a year, certain personality traits start to come For out. For sure. Right? This is where it gets really good. Dude. Oh, bro. She's probably going to be a brat. So I, oh, my. <laughs> oh bro, listen, more challenge for you. Oh, listen. <laughs> I, so she, I thought this one was supposed to be easy, bro. Uh, well, so she's chill. She's otherwise chill, right? <laughs> she's a happy one, right? She is. She's always happy, always chill. But I'm starting to realize she likes to tease and torment her older brother, her, her almost three-year-old older brother. At first I thought she was just being a little baby, you know, just being a baby yeah. and he's getting annoyed with her. But yesterday I put them on a blanket on the floor. We have hardwood floors and I'm pulling them around and they're having fun. Right. And I noticed she figured out because she's next to her brother, she figured out that she could lift her leg up and kick him. So she starts <laughs> kicking him. Right. And he's like, stop it, stop it, stop it. And then I look at her little cute little baby face and she makes, you know, a little kid is trying to like mess with another kid. They make mm -hmm. a face. Yes. She starts making this face. Like she's trying to fuck with him yes. and she's kicking him and he holds her leg down. Then she starts grabbing him with her hand. And then she kicks him with the leg. And I'm like, she's purposely fucking with her older brother at 10 months old. I, re I recorded it. I got to show That's you guys. Hilarious. Oh, I was dying. I sent it to Jessica. And she's like, is she doing that on purpose? I'm like, yeah, dude, oh, she yeah. knows she's bothering him. Yeah. She's doing it on purpose. You know, it's funny, so funny too, is that it, sometimes what happens too is because the, it's, she's a girl, she's younger and smaller. Yeah. You defend her still because the, the, the brother is older, stronger. And what you don't even realize you, you know, unnatural or un, <laughs> unintentionally do yeah. is create that even more. It's you kind of a hard it. dynamic. So you guys don't, you guys don't yeah. know this cause you guys don't have daughters and, and Doug has a daughter, but he doesn't have a son on t with her. But when you have, I don't know, this is, I don't know if this is common. This happens with me. Jessica called it out with my daughters and my sons. I'm harder on my sons. Of course. Than I am with my daughters. And if there's a scuffle or something that happens between them, I tend to side 
And so what this has created- That's why it's good you have a balance. Well, yes. Hopefully, yeah, like, yeah, mom, you got to be the other way around. Yeah. What this creates is, like, my daughters think they can't, like, my older daughter, she just messed with her older brother, and he just has to take it. And I know why. It's because when they were little, if he, like, you know, did something back to her, it's like, don't you dare. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Meanwhile, she was the one yeah. messing with totally. them. So I'm like, damn it, this is going to happen again. You know? Yeah. <laughs> my son's going to be like, she always hits me. Well, I don't I mean, care if she hits you. We can I let mean, her do it. You know? I know people get weird when I when you do analogies like this, but I can because I have a kid now and I had dogs. And I, <laughs> I had I had two English bulldogs and I had they were uh, a year and a half apart from each other. And Bentley, the older one, I remember, you know, so he's only like, what, two or something like that when I bring in the the other one. And the other little one, Mozzie, was so, so small and little. And he was kind of a runt of litter, too. So he's going to be, he was already going to be small in stature. I would always like protect know, him. Yeah, protect him because Bentley would, could, was too rough and I was afraid that he was going to hurt him. And so I did that so much that I trained Bentley that he is not allowed to respond like to physically just mess with him. And then as Mozzie got older and turned into a teenage dog, you know, and get into the, its, its young teenage years or whatever and, and dog years. And he became a little shit. And then you're, you have this smaller bulldog would just attack and punk Bentley all the time. And then Bentley was so afraid to <laughs> respond. <laughs> and that's not natural in the like the dog world. No. Like you're supposed to allow, like the the, the the alpha will assert himself. And once he's and done that, the dog will up. normally will submit. Like a dog, once once a pack has, has d decided who the alpha is, then it doesn't have to keep reproving itself all the time. But his whole life, he had to get in, he got in fights all the time because he would never assert himself, even though he was the alpha because he could crush Mozzie. He would constantly would take this this beating, and Mozzie was constantly trying to prove himself. To it was like, man, I really created that and didn't realize yeah. it until after the Jessica fact. calls me out on it, and it's like, oh, I'm more I'm aware. I'm like, yeah, you're right. I'm like way harder. On the boys and animals. I think Justin's right though. Like I feel like I mean Katrina would for sure would be that. The the way she you think is, she would be harder on the girl. Yes. No. Oh. Yo, definitely. I think oh, she yeah. would. I think she would be hella hard on a girl because she's such a uh, hard ass girl herself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But man, she is so soft on Max. I always want. I'm like, God, dude, he's you can't be that soft. I've heard that right. Mm -hmm. I've read that moms are like that with their boys and dads yes. are like that with their. Is that because I wonder if it's because you know you're like as a boy. You know, as a man and a boy, right? You know the shit that they're doing. You're like, come yes. on, bro. And the girl, the mom with the yeah, girl's like, that has to be a fact. That's totally. Yeah, I yeah. totally think it's that. Yeah, because it, and that's the thing. There's a little bit of uncertainty there, like uh, when to 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 correct and like and and I'm like quick on that. Like any inclination of like uh, some kind of like uh, something I need to to address. Like I'm addressing it. Like right now, any sort Courtney's of attitude. Like, Whoa, or, yeah. yeah, that was like zero to a hundred. I'm like, look. What happened the rest of the day? We had a great day, right? <laughs> <laughs> I just nipped that in the butt, yeah. you know? So uh, it's just one of those things. It makes her uncomfortable, but uh, I see the pattern. I know the, I know what's going to transpire after yeah. that. And so it's, it's. I, I imagine it would be the same thing, you know, with, you know, with the girl in terms of like the manipulation tactics, yes. the way that they can kind of pull strings yes. and all that. And then we're just like, oh, like oh. hypnotized by it. You know? Oh, yes. yeah. yeah. I totally, my, my I totally older think daughter, that. she knows how to do that. And so I think that, I think, I'm if, not aware I think if we had a girl, I think Katrina would be much rougher and I'd be constantly going, hey, take it easy yeah. on my baby girl. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I could see me she's being such like, a sweetie. Yeah, oh. I could see me being yeah. that way. She'd be like, nah, she's just working you. You're not yeah. even paying, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I could totally see that dynamic. And if the opposite is true with Max, I'm always just like, stop coddling him. He's going to be, He's fine. Like he'll be all right. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, it is. All That's funny. So, speaking of wives, is there? I was just talking to Je Jessica. Doesn't believe me, so I would love you guys to hear what you guys think. So, is there something that your wife does, or maybe a way that she might look that is what maybe she would think wouldn't be attractive, but you find super attractive? Because I'll give you guys an example. Okay, yeah, give me an example. Like, like I cannot resist my wife when she's in the middle of m doing mom shit wearing my sweats and her hair is back and no makeup <laughs> and she just handling shit or trying to do shit and she always gets mad at me because i'm like uh, i'm like you're all handsy oh bro i'm like on her like oh my god <laughs> and she thinks i'm full of shit like you're just saying that because you're whatever i'm like i have no makeup on i'd even take a shower i'm like no dude this is the hottest thing i've ever seen in my life 
Is there anything that you guys have? Yeah, there's two for me, right? And I think that one is is similar. Like it's just it's n normally taking care of Max, right? When I see her in the kitchen putting together dinner, multitasking stuff on the laptop and, and email stuff, like mm -hmm. I see her in her element like that and and handling that like and and I'm like actually in a moment where I'm like just chill. Like I'm decompressing from the day. I'm just uh, relaxing and she's managing all these things in our house, right? And everything's running smooth. Like it's a very attractive. The other one for me which is probably unique and different is uh business mode her. Like she's really she is really really talented um and I probably don't give her enough credit for what she does for the business behind the scenes. And I get glimpses of it, right? I get to watch it in action and it's super attractive. And she can be, you know, ball cap on and like sweaty from also working out in the garage and coming mm -hmm. back and not- Making shit happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because she's handling things that are such a big deal for us, the business, and like, I just love- And the, I, what I know is that she- do, And this is to a fault, by the way, too. Like she doesn't, um, she doesn't ever tell anybody- and like, she doesn't ever, like one of the things I always, when she used to work for Albany's, I would always have to tell her like, you know, you have to kind of cheerlead for yourself a little bit. Like, I, I know you come up as an athlete of like, just do your, do, do the job, you know, do your work and like, let your, let your, let, let your game speak for itself. Like mm -hmm. she has that attitude. And unfortunately in the workforce, it doesn't serve you all the time. Like, because your bosses above aren't paying attention. They yeah, don't yeah, give yeah. a shit. Oh, no, you're right. It's not like a, there's not like this direct scoreboard in a game where they're staring at you. It's just like, so she does a lot of stuff that is really impressive and really should be celebrated and doesn't. And the fact that she doesn't need that and doesn't ask for it, like there's this super yeah. hot, attractive mm -hmm. thing about that. It's so. a similar, similar attraction I have. Like it's, it's just handling so many things and, and you just walk in and, it's always for me it's like she'll she'll like give me the breakdown of like how many assignments like uh, you know my eldest has been turning in or has is hasn't been and like gives me like the the insight on what to kind of like bring up with each kid and like what they're struggling with and like she's she's so on top of like all of their uh interactions at school their friends like all these like things that like i just don't you know, I, I come back home and I'm like, oh, okay, what's happening? You know, I'm just like so unaware of like all these things. And she's like so great about uh, like giving me all the details of every little thing. Like if I didn't have her, it was just like, oh my God, I'd be like just uh, yeah. walking around. And it's attractive. Yeah, I love it. I love it because it's because then you feel like it's. You know, you, you have that 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 person that that team member that's like, okay, we're we're being effective, you know, and like we're we're conquering things together. So that's yeah. that again. I don't know what kind of with uh, um, attachment Adam brought up, but that was like that other kind of like a um, oh the bonding, the bonding, yeah, yeah that, that, that bonding one where you're both like trying to achieve something together. Yeah, yeah. how much more powerful that yes. is when you like. Uh, I want to say have an orgasm, but it's whoa. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, like, it's it's very uh, orgasmic for us. Yeah. I, that was a big we because that was one of the few mind pump episodes that I'd ever watched with Katrina. Like sat down and actually watched the uh, rewatched it. We just don't do that, and um, that was a really powerful one for her because she's just like I think that was so good because uh, you know it's it's easy to look at like the things that you're doing for your partner at, 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 because you're loving them with through your language and you're doing all these things and not realizing that we have different needs yeah. and there's different things that make us feel that way and, and men being respect and then having things that we set goals for and accomplish totally. together and her being able to assist that what a, a huge trend like for her it's like that yeah. she doesn't care that's not even a big deal to her yeah. and then like after hearing that episode she's going back and be like oh my god that's right when we set that goal to do that and we did that like i remember that time in our relationship yeah. she's like oh like there was this massive light bulb that went off of like how powerful that is to to be able to be aware of that and then to actually go implement it and when she's wearing yoga pants in the kitchen <laughs> insane <laughs> yeah. 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 gets me every time <laughs> that's so funny yeah hey adam i want to ask you um how's your experience been with ned still because i know you, you cut out cannabis you haven't done it for a while you used ned you said you had a very powerful yeah, effect from it it did so doug actually i, I think i admitted this last time that he had kind of said something and i was like ah i kind of dismissed it and um so now what i've been doing because i have had the last couple of weeks have been a little off with my sleep 
Um, and I haven't done it every night and I should be because I can tell a difference on the nights that I've used it. It's interesting to me, someone who has had as much cannabis as I have to have it now completely. I mean, I don't know how long it's been now. It's been uh, over a month. Oh yeah. It's been well over a month now that I haven't had it. Um, how interesting it is that the, 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 the CBD is so well, the full spectrum is so, um, effective. Yeah. I didn't, I always, kind, I always all, kind of felt it. Yeah. Like I've always felt it, but I, uh, I've told you guys before, like once, once I started to get introduced to the mellow and the magnesium, what a difference that was for me, I really actually kind of fell off of using the sleep. I just didn't feel like I needed it at, at all. And wasn't a big deal. Obviously I was still smoking back then, not smoking anymore. Now having that, like, I'm like, oh shit, this is like for people that don't smoke, like, yeah, powerful. Well, I was going to bring it up cause I've given it to like a family before that don't smoke not like don't even haven't been exposed to any of and then they'll take some of the cbd because it's like so strong like uh, you the feel response it. yeah you they're feel like it. wow like it's it's almost like they get close to getting high off of it. oh no my yeah. so it's didn't the, realize how numb i was to that my until, yeah it's the one supplement of all the products i've introduced to my my parents it's the one product they don't stop they're consistent with it i get text messages from hey we're running out can can you get me some more absolutely mm -hmm. it's the one that my dad and my mom use yeah my mom loves it they I use they, so they time. get the capsules because they mm -hmm. don't like the taste of the oil same thing right and they do one little tiny capsule before bed mm -hmm. my dad's like my, my arthritis pain is it's better for their joint. i sleep better yeah. my mom's like pain. my blood sugar her blood sugar measures better when she takes it on a regular basis, which is very interesting. So, you know, we we're uh, today talking about, you know, fatherhood, parenting and stuff like that. Um, so shout out today. I'm going to give you guys a, a show to watch. Um, I just, we watched it last night. Uh, there's a, I think a five part, four or five part series on Netflix on David Beckham. Really? Good. Oh crap. I just started oh, yeah? that. Really good. I just started that. Really good. Bro. Yeah. So good. Yeah, I know. He's got, I, I respect the guy. So, I know. I didn't know. When you I didn't watch know. him growing up and yeah. what he did with, with his, like how he got talented, the way he trained. Yeah. I, I thought it was just because he was handsome. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no he's uh, incredible. He's got a really, he's got a really cool story. Crazy story. And uh, him and his wife, I'm only, I'm not, I haven't they stay, finished they've, the first, they've been together forever. Bro. So they genuinely, like, you know how rare it is for celebrities to not get divorced? Yeah. At that level of fame and popularity. Oh, yeah. yeah. And even They're the like way the, it planned out, like you, not to spoiler alert, but you know, there's a, there's a part where he talks about when he first saw her on TV and he's yeah. like, I'm going to marry her. Dude, he and then, wow. like, went and did. As a Spice Girl? And then, yes. And went and did and <laughs> then have through their 20s. Was a champion. When he 20s, played, 30s, now into his 40s, have raised I think a, they're in their 50s now, right? He's approaching 50. I think he's. He. Tri he 50? So tri here's the Close thing that. 50, here's yeah. the thing that tripped me out, right? He's famous already. Yeah. She's already famous. She's a Spice Girl. Yeah. He, while playing for Man Manchester United, they're, and they're literally going to the finals, playing some, like some of the most important games ever. Yeah. He would drive, ready for this? Four hours, four hours to see her for 15 minutes and then drive back. And his teammates were all like, everybody was worried. Like, the manager of the, yeah. of the team was like, this is fucking terrible. Of course, he still performed yeah. very well. But he would drive four hours just to see her. Well, he's forty eight. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I will. After you guys watch it, we can talk all about it because there's actually some really crazy so stuff good. as far as of being a father that he went through that I just can't even fathom. Oh, I don't, and I don't, just I don't, gives I don't you a whole far. nother oh, okay. respect for him. So we can talk about hmm. it afterwards. But go watch it. It's really good. It's worth the cool. worth the watch. Um, great story. I was. I'm, I'm not a big like soccer guy. Like so, I don't follow a ton of soccer. Obviously, I knew loosely uh, his story, but not to that it's detail. Football. So definitely, <laughs> <laughs> definitely good to watch. Organifi makes organic supplements to improve your health, wellness, and athletic performance. They have superfood blends that make it easy and enjoyable to add more variety and nutrition to your day. For example, they have a green juice. It's great for overall health and vitality. They have a red juice for energy. It's a great natural, non-stimulant pre-workout. They have a gold juice for before bed to help you rest and relax and many other amazing organic products. You also get a discount if you go through our link. Go to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code Mind Pump and get a massive 20% off. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Sherry from Illinois. Hi, Sherry. How can we help you? Hi. Uh, I submitted a question asking about postmenopausal symptoms and being able to uh, get the same results as I did premenopausally. Uh, in the gym. I have been through menopause now for about four-ish years, um, not seeing the same results. 
besides the night sweats and the hot flashes and all the other wonderful things that come with menopause, you just don't get the muscle building that you get before. You get the belly fat that's hard to get rid of, um, the brain fog. I do work out every day. I love to lift. Um, four years ago, I actually did my very first swimsuit competition um, at 52 years old. Wow, and would right. love to be able to get to that again next year, but it's just been a struggle. Okay. This is a good question, Sherry. Now I'm looking at the question that you posted. And so do you mind if I, if I talk a little bit more about what you sent in just for context? Yes, please do. Okay. So you are on HRT. So you are on some hormone replacement therapy, which is going to bring hormones back or generally try to get close to where they were pre-menopause. That's the idea. Um, yeah. you also wrote in there that you're going through some personal, personal challenges, some real stressful events, divorce, and also aging parents with, uh, with health issues. Now, the reason why I'm bringing that up is because there's two, if you look at, uh, big life changes in people, generally what you start, what you see is right around mid thirties, 40, you see people's, they're, they're, they're having kids sometimes early thirties, but right now it looks like mid thirties. Kid, people start to have kids. They're getting married. That's challenging. Buy their first house. Then you get into the fifties, and then aging parents. A lot of people don't know just how stressful and challenging that it is to take care of parents that are yeah. aging. I'm watching my parents, or I watched my parents go through it uh, with my grandfather, both my grandparents uh, on my dad's side. Um, it, it's a lot of challenges, uh, and then you throw a divorce on top of it. Now, the reason why I'm I'm saying this is because. There's a, there's a lot of things that happen all at once and we tend to conflate them all into, well, this must be the, the, the fact that I'm over 30. That's what people will say. Or this must be because I'm now post menopausal. But the reality is all these things are playing a big role. We don't quite know which one's playing the biggest role. The fact that you're on HRT, I would, I would say that the post menopause hormone changes. Now it's not going to be completely negated with the HRT. You can't completely mimic natural hormones, but a lot of that is going to get, um, mitigated through, um, hormone therapy. I would say that a lot of what you're feeling in terms of your body, not responding like it used to probably has more to do with the life stresses than it does to the, hor to the hormone changes, um, that you would experience with, with menopause. Okay. So that being said, how do we approach training? How do we approach diet? Uh, you're going to have to uh, compensate for the added stress by modifying your training program. I don't think training the way you did before without these added stresses is going to be a good idea because I'm going to guess, especially because you can, you competed that you probably trained close to the limit anyway. I mean, you, you, you competed at a, at a, at a high level at 52 years old. I'm looking at you now. I can't see all of you, but you look fit. I can, you look energized. You look really good. So you, you probably were already kind of pushing the limits but now you add on top of that two of the most stressful things that people will go through in their lives. Um, you can't change those two things. I mean, Doug's going through your Instagram. You look phenomenal. Yeah. Um, I, you can't train the way you did without those stresses and expect your body to be able to recover and adapt like it did before. Now you can expect to maintain a really good level of fitness and to even do really well, but you're going to have to modify your training. You can't train as hard or as long. And, but because you went into it so fit, uh, I don't think you're going to suffer from like this huge backslide. You know, the body maintains muscle and strength very well when you've already built it. It's like, you know, the, the data shows like one fourth to one ninth of the volume of training it, with, with all things being equal is required to keep what you built. Which is, wow. yeah, which is exceptional. So somebody who works out five days a week, six days a week, they back down to two days a week would probably lose no strength and no muscle. And I wouldn't progress, but they wouldn't lose any. So what that okay. show, what, what that demonstrates is with someone like yourself and you wrote in here about the supplements that you take and it looks like you have a good idea with what your diet is. Uh, you, you, you mentioned in here, you're not sure if you're getting one gram of protein per pound of body weight. That'd be a good thing to aim for. But I would say reduce the intensity and reduce the volume of your training until you get through this challenging time. Otherwise, what's going to happen is you're just going to be spinning your tires in the dirt. And, and you're not just going to not maintain. You're probably going to go backwards because hmm. that's a lot 
that's a lot on you uh, to have all at the same time. Any idea where the calorie intake is right now? Um, I try to stick when I'm lifting heavier. Uh, I try to stick around 15 to 1600 a day. And then what about, okay. What about on the other days? What, what's when you toggle back and forth? So 15 to 1600 um, and then do you go down? I typically try to go down. Yeah. Yeah. So I, okay. So definitely I would reduce the amount of training volume down to three day a week type of a program, like a maps anabolic type program, a symmetry program would be great. And then make sure that you're getting at least 15, 1600 plus calories plus hitting your gram of protein. Like those things are going to, uh, we, we want to, and this would be a good time for you to kind of reverse diet. Ideally, I'd want to slowly increase your calories and get you closer to 2000 plus. I definitely wouldn't want to cut and add any more stress on the already, all the stress that you're balancing out right now. It sounds like you're kind of, you're, I think you're doing too much right now. Working yeah. against, you're working against the body. And I think scaling back is going to serve you much better. Yeah. What it, did your training look like specifically? When I did, currently or when I currently yeah. train? Uh-huh. Currently, um, I try to weight lift at least four days a week. You know, a push day, a pull day. Um, do some ab days and then a, a cardio day. I like to bike sometimes after work or take a walk as well. Um, so I'm, I mean, I'm getting movement five to six days a week and lifting at least three to four days a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't, don't underestimate the impact that stress can have on the body, especially yeah. the, the, the type. If you look at, when you look at the data on the most stressful things that, uh, the typical person will go through, you're doing two of them at the same time. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot that's happening right now and that will massively impact your body's ability to recover and adapt to any kind of stress. So even if you're training now compared to what you were doing, maybe when you were competing and you look at it, you're like, yeah, it's not that bad. You know, I, I remember I used to train mm-hmm. so hard and push myself. Like your, 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 your body's already going through a lot. Um, I think scaling down more would be better. I think three days a week yeah, of strength finding training. that right dose is going to be crucial. Yeah. yeah. So so reducing it down, but then I guess um, maybe taking like one one of those workouts out, you know, and see how you respond to that. Because I mean, I was I was a little bit leaning towards like a maps fifteen, maybe is like a uh, like <clears throat> maybe like reduce the actual overall time length you're doing. I mean, I'm for that too. I like that. Yeah, and, and just because of like Sal's point of, of so much stress and like really like managing that uh, appropriately just to give you enough of a stimulus. So we're, we're responding with our muscles, but at the same time, we're not over, over uh, whelming your body with more of this kind of a stress. maps 15 with a nice walk afterwards and increasing the calories would be a, a, a beautiful place to be. You, you, you'll, you'll, and you'll, what you'll notice Sherry, when you do that is you'll just start to feel better. You'll just start to feel a little more energy feel good, stronger. Not, yeah, you yeah, want it to charge you. Not too many changes physically, but then slowly you'll start to see your body kind of progress a little bit. And you'll be like, wow, this is kind of weird. Like my body's actually progressing and I'm doing less. You know, if you want to add anything, if you like to do uh, things, um, you know, that are that are health and fitness related, there are things you can do that are more recuperative on the body. Things like yin yoga or slow yoga type of courses. Or mobility. They're not, yeah, or mobility work. It's not going to beat you up or make you sweat. I know you're laughing because you're probably. I'm I'm um, in training to become a yoga instructor. Oh, on oh, top of oh everything perfect! Else. Oh, great! Oh, yeah, god! Yeah, yeah. So you know exactly what Yin Yoga is, and and, and that the restorative yeah. forms of yoga. I th- if you want to keep working out every day, you know that often, and you're taking away strength training, like a nice slow inward, you know, type of 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 class, like a yoga type of practice, that would actually. What you're going to do, think of your, you have a bucket and, 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 and you fill it with stress. And once it overflows, that's it. It doesn't matter what you do. It's just going to be damaging. Well, the proper, the right kind of rejuvenating type of activity or practices makes the bucket larger. So now you can have, you know, like, it's like, um, you know, it's like when I get home, I have two little kids, right? So I'll get home and my wife, you know, she wants to pull her hair out. And so she'll leave for, 45 minutes to an hour and do something, anything, grocery shop, whatever. She comes back like a totally new person with that little break. It's like she made the yeah. bucket larger, right? So 
I think that would be a good thing. And since you're, you're learning how to do this, this will be the perfect time to apply. Now don't do power yoga. Don't do like the, the kind yeah, yeah, yeah. Do the kind where you, you, that, you know, that is like restorative, uh, that in combination with like a maps 15 advanced, I think would be great. And I think it would really keep you in a nice, healthy place. And then when you get through these difficult, challenging times, yeah. Uh, then you can start to ramp things back up. I do want to creep your calories up, though. Okay, I want yeah. to hammer that home. I think I think you can su your body can support some more calories than what you're eating right now, and then and then making that goal of hitting that protein intake every day. Between that and the advice we gave with Mass Fifteen Yoga and walking, I think it's going to put you in a really good place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 15, 15 as in 15 minutes. Yeah. yeah it's, the, it, it'll take about 20 because Sal's saying do the advanced version. The advanced version is about 20, okay. but here's the thing, 20 minutes of lifting, do some either mobility or go for a walk or yoga. So you'll still get an hour of exercise. And it's every, but, it's six days a week, okay. by the but way. you've got, yeah, six days a week lifting. So six okay. days you're, you're actually lifting weights, but it's yeah. only for Just about 20 minutes. And, and now you're sp spending more time on inward and recuperative stuff, mobility, yoga, walking. So okay. 20 minutes of good lifting, six days a week, and then complement that with the restorative stuff with an, a bump in a little bit of calories and hitting that protein intake and watch how your body responds. Yeah, and you, I mean, I mean, Doug's pulling up your, your Instagram. I don't know if that's your Instagram or your social media. You look, ama you look amazing. Yeah. Oh well, thanks, guys. Yeah, it's, you look, you look phenomenal, but you, but you can't it's redline. Work. You can't redline all the time. And with people like you, I love I love I love it when people like you take our advice because they're always surprised that not only do they not get out of shape. Oftentimes, what happens is their body starts to respond yeah, again. They improve. Yeah, they're actually like, wow, this is interesting. My, I'm I'm getting results, and I'm doing less. And it's just because you're not overwhelming your body with too much stress. Well, I love the show. I listen and get snippets of wisdom from you guys all the time. So I appreciate the input 100%. Awesome. I, it will be, it'll be hard for me to scale back because that's the <laughs> kind of course. person I yeah, am, but I, know. I will take your advice. Yeah. Cross my heart. Awesome. And you, <laughs> and you found us through Shalene, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, that makes I sense. did. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Very cool. Yeah. Mass, Doug's going to send Mass 15 over to you, Sherry. Keep us posted. I will. Thank right. you so much. Thank you, you. All right. Take care. Take care. I don't, I, I mean, do you guys, you guys remember, I mean, I, I've brought this up so many times. I distinctly remember when my body was under so much stress yeah. that it's like, I remember I'd go to the, I'd work out and I'd be like, I did nothing and my body can't handle this. And I just, it was so hard for me to get through my own head. Like, yeah. Like, you know, normally I could do this easy. Yeah. Like this would be nothing. Yeah. What am I just did 20 minutes? It's like baffling. Nothing. I know. But yeah. I know, but it's stress crazy. Really, really adds up, man. Well, that'll be the hardest part. Again, yep. is the, is the mental hurdle to get through that, especially if she came off of just competing not that long ago. So you have this mentality, which most competitors have of yeah. more is better yeah, and, and ignoring the pain. Yes. Right. right through. Work through it like crazy. I, I mean, I also think she's going to, it's, it's going to be important. She gets her calories up. I mean, she was saying that when she was eating what, 15, 1600 on no, a heavy not, day that's not and then on a low day. Day, yeah. she was she was reducing she that was reducing yeah. it. so with the amount of activity and strength training she's doing she definitely needs to get the the calories up there and make sure she's hitting that one gram of protein our next caller is austin from minnesota what's up man how can we help you hey what's up guys it's really cool to see you on here and shouts out to doug by the way for being the solid hero behind everything hey, i hey. know that's uh, arduous yeah, no, everybody needs real. a doug he does he does everything <laughs> yeah so. puppet yeah. master uh, I'm really thankful to get to ask you my question and uh, yeah, it's cool to see your faces. So um, uh, I want to give a quick shout out specifically to Adam. Um, Adam, you and I have some orange theory uh, history. When I first started in training, when I first went through NASM, got CPT, I uh, began that journey at an orange theory in Minnesota, became a head coach there and coached. And it took me about a year before I heard about you guys in 2018 or so. And then uh, I heard the episode why most group fitness classes suck <laughs> and at the heart i heard it and it hit me deep and i actually decided to show that to all of my coaches that i was working with. <laughs> <laughs> that well oh, and others received it well and you know what i think it actually really helped us for the better especially oh, me and so um hearing you guys since then and kind of developing my own practice in training and also for myself it's been just pivotal. So first of all, thank you. Just a deep thank you. I think it's changed a lot of the group fitness space, which I'm no longer in, but I think at, we had at least a little bit of good work in there. So awesome. That oh, makes, cool. All right. That makes me feel good. Great. 
Yeah, man. Uh, well, I appreciate you guys. My question has to do with uh, cut. And so I, myself, as you can see, I've never done an intentional cut, at least in the ways that we talk about here in training. I've coached a lot of people through it in my own personal training practice. And for myself, I've always been a hard gainer. And so going through high school, starting to get into weight training, it's always been difficult for me um, as an ectomorph to put on muscle and bottom weight. And um especially going into working in a place like Orange Theory, I got really good at doing the Orange Theory workout over the course of those five years. Uh, lost whatever muscle I had too, and uh, just became fast basically on the treadmill and on a row, rowing machine. And so um, since the pandemic, I took it on myself to uh, practice what I preach with bulking and with um, focusing more on strength training like I used to do. And I put up some impressive numbers and my body weight went from 171 ish to right now i'm hitting about 200 pounds um Ooh. since then nice uh, it's been yeah it's been a slow process i've been pretty faithful for tracking um and uh just a little more context i have a one-year-old daughter she's amazing and since before she was born decided i wanted to run a marathon mostly because i wanted to know how to coach somebody through it if somebody came to me saying hey i want to maintain strength what can i do if i want to do this endurance race and so ran that when i finished it looked at my wife and said this isn't good for you like this is not good <laughs> and then just decided i'm just going to put my bees in there and keep going on strength training so all that to say i built up a lot it was you know somewhere around 25 pounds gain since then and muscle i've got some good numbers i feel proud about my lifts um just programming my own workouts um, in phases and since then. Um, and so now I'm just interested in going through a cut for, I'm not sure how long. I want your advice on that too. And also what's a way that I can do it that is just helpful. You know, I don't really have any rhyme or reason to do it other than I want to be able to help coach people through it when they've also seen some good strength gains, gotten to a place where they're happy and strong and feel healthy. Um, and I feel like Adam, you said in other episodes too, you can sort of show off the work that you've done um, kind of building that up. So I'm curious what you think about that. Yeah, this is, this is really cool. And I do think there's a tremendous value in getting it, taking yourself, especially as a coach and a trainer, uh, even after I'd already been a trainer for well over a decade to go into a competitive level of body fat percentage. Um, I, I think I gained some of the most knowledge in my coaching skills during that process, which was really surprising mm -hmm. to me. So I think there's a lot of value in that. Do you know where your your kind of current calories are right now? Like, what are we looking at? Yeah, thanks for that. You know, I think when I had sent this question, I hadn't um, been tracking at the time. So over the course of the past four weeks or so, I've been tracking mostly to find my maintenance calories. And I'm sitting somewhere between uh, 3,000 and 3,100 calories at maintenance right now. And nice. I've always had a harder time gaining. So having a higher uh, metabolism, not really surprising at this point, but kind of recognizing that's where I'm starting from. I have... Uh, been pretty faithfully tracking protein specifically, making sure I hit my protein target of 200 grams per day, which is my was my goal body weight where I'm at now. You're, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. I, so you're, you, there's a question you asked uh, that you wrote in that says, um, you know, what do you have? What advice do you have for a first time cut? Will the addition of cardio movement substitute less food intake? Okay. Think. Okay. Uh, think of exercise and workouts. That's for health for fitness, for performance, strength, endurance, whatever. And then diet is for fat loss. So if mm -hmm. you're trying to get leaner, make it do it through diet. If you want to improve fitness and performance, do it through exercise. Now, of course, there's a crossover there. So what I'm saying isn't black and white, but generally if you follow that advice, then you're going to be okay. If you do exercise for fat loss, you'll run it, you'll hit some walls real fast. And if you do workouts, not for fitness, but for the, then you're going to, you're going to run to, you're going to hit some walls. So the workouts mm -hmm. are for performance, for fitness, for health, diet, for getting leaner. So if you want to get leaner, especially with your calories being over 3000 at maintenance, it's pretty straightforward. Just, I would cut your calories. I wouldn't change anything else. Be consistent. And you should see yourself, especially because you're, you're doing so well, you've done so well with putting on muscle you know, it says here you 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 estimate you to be around thirteen to fifteen percent body fat. I would yep. say getting down to ten percent that's probably six eight weeks of consistent, uh, you know, nice consistent oh, easily, deficit. Yeah. Easily, I think you can get even faster than that because I think you're in a really healthy, good place. Yeah. You've been in a bulk for a while. Uh, you know, there's there's many ways to do this. Uh, I like how I would do it, uh, considering where you're currently at. 
I'd run three to four weeks of the cut, cutting about 500 calories a day consistently, no cardio, nothing like that, just straight through training and, and, and diet. I'd interrupt that with a week of maintenance to slight surplus mm -hmm. and then go right back at it again. So it'd, it'd be 500 calorie cut, see how you nice you lean out for about three to four weeks. And the way I would decide three to four weeks is if I see my progress stalling for two weeks in a row, it's kind of how I always did it. Like I didn't like, I want to see myself and give myself like kind of two week windows of, okay, I'm seeing progress. I'm good. So I'll stay the course. Oh, wait, I'm not really seeing a lot of progress. Another wink went by. I didn't really see much progress. Okay. Let's, let's go back to a maintenance to surplus to interrupt the diet. Okay. Do that for a week. Boom. Then I'd come back down again. And I just would keep stair stepping it like that. Um, the only way I would introduce any sort of cardio would be like, I'm, I'm getting down to at least six or 7% before that like mm -hmm. all through diet. And then, then when I would get ready for stage, the final two weeks or so, and cause you, you heard the point Sal made, like it's, you could use uh, movement exercise to, to burn body fat, but it, it's very quickly, you get adapted to that and don't see the results. So I, I mean, I don't mind two weeks, three weeks tops for utilizing something like that. I definitely don't do it out the gate. So out the gates, I want to use all manipulation through uh, training and through my food, and then as I get really lean to get that edge, like say I'm a week or two out from I'm going on Vegas or I've decided this is the day I'm going to go measure body fat or whatever. And so then I'm going to use that cardio to get me that last push. That's it. Yeah. But I mean, it is, yeah, it is pretty you, straightforward. Go ahead. Would you typically expect to see um, any strength gain during that time? I'm assuming not. No, I mean, no, if there's no, not. No, no. In fact, in fact, you should be really happy if you can hang on and maintain yeah. To strength. Which, it's because you're so strong. I'm looking at your yeah. numbers. You know, 320 pound bench press, 450 pound squat, 405 dead. If you were just starting on lifting, then I'd be like, yeah, you'll probably see some strength gains. But because you're so strong for your body weight, even if you lost no muscle, just the reduction in energy and calories. And, yeah. yeah, from the calories, you're going to see. You'll probably see some decreases in strength. Uh, not a lot, but yep. you'll probably see some. And that's okay. I, I wouldn't worry too much about it. No. I would worry about it if it gets real like, oh my God, I feel you know terrible. But I, I wouldn't get too hung up on the numbers. Yeah, you you should expect it. If you don't, that's like, a, you're, oh like in the, you're in the Goldilocks zone. Yeah, you're crushing. Like if you, if you actually see yourself, in fact, if you know you're leaning out because you're either measuring or you can see a visual change week over week and you're hanging on to strength, you, that's a good indicator of like you are like Perfect. perfectly cutting, you know, just the right amount that you're seeing nice little bit of progress, but not so hard and fast that it's really hurting yeah. your lifting and some of that. So it's rare for that to happen for someone at to, your strength levels. I yes. would expect a little bit of a, a yeah. A you should expect it, but yeah. if you somehow were able to, boy, you're in a really really nice place, and I would stay right there. Yeah, no, and that's helpful too. And I know too, just in training that we're playing the long game always, right? And so none of this is designed to be uh, happening super quick. And so I'm hoping to be patient with that too. And I'm okay with cuts on some of those numbers. Like I'm not really holding tight. I want to do this in a healthy way so that that's how I can help to coach other people who come with that same mindset, right? So I appreciate keeping the strength up and it's more of a curiosity for me at this point. You I, know? I love that. I, and, I, and, the, and because you, you're doing that, you're doing that the right way. This is also why I don't even mess with the cardio because it'll be more sustainable if you didn't have to use any cardio. Yep. Yeah. So if you, if you were able to preserving, if you don't, yeah, it's more muscle preserving, it's less work and effort you have to do. So if you can do this all through diet manipulation, then you should be able to maintain it a lot easier and decide if how long you want to stay in the single digit body fat range or go back up. And by the way, after you get here, the some of the best workouts and training is going to be after post when you get to yeah, get down to like 10, 9 percent. Yeah, 10 percent. You get a little, single digit body fat and, and then, then do a mini bulk. You just like, oh, holy cow, that's that is the best. Yep. So what are you uh, following program wise? We got some. Are you following any of our stuff right now? You've been writing on your own. You you got something you want to train of ours? You could probably. I'd love to see you do either maps aesthetic. You do symmetry. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks for asking that. You know, I've been building my own and kind of structuring in different phases just based on what I've learned from you and with NASM. And um, I've done like some anabolic pre phase with just a buddy of mine, but I've never ran. But what I'd be curious about is I've been hearing about symmetry because I've done so much in the sagittal plane through these big movements. It's like a lot of powerlifting. I used to do competitive Olympic weightlifting at different times, getting technically good at movements. And um, mm -hmm. I know that where I lack and where I don't want to go to mostly is that unilateral and oh, lateral. You'll benefit from you know what? There you, go. you know why this was the perfect program yeah. to cut on for you? 
because you're not going to get hung up on any yeah. numbers because you're yes. going to be doing unilateral. It's not going to freak you out. You have no reference. So you'll be doing stuff that's new anyway. And by the way, this is the time where you might see strength trains. You might start in a cut, <laughs> start symmetry, and see movements that you're doing unilaterally. It's novel stimulus. And too. watch yourself get strong. There yep. is a possibility. Of, there's more of a possibility of that than if you stayed in the way you're training right. and kept your numbers up. But now by switching to symmetry and something novel, you should you might actually see in a cut. I think you week, will, just week, from the skill. Yeah, adaptation. week four or five, you're stronger than what you were at week one or two, which yeah. would be an, an excellent place to be. Mm. So we'll yeah, send we'll send we'll sure. send symmetry over to you. Oh, uh, that's exciting. Thank you. And yeah, I I think it'll be a good growing moment for me. Like you say, we do whatever we or we we all tend to have the things we don't like doing, and that's probably what we should be doing the most, right? And so, so um, practicing what I preach, and thank you for that. And um, thanks for entertaining this question, too. I mean, this is just such a fun piece of my world. I have a kind of a hard job. I work as a hospital chaplain, and doing things like this, oh. just being in the gym and setting my own goals for this is a really um, mindful thing. And so little tasks like this, I call them little, but these moments are really fun to entertain and just to dig deeper into with you. Awesome, oh, awesome. Cool, yeah. man. Thank you, well, buddy. Thanks for what you do, man. Yep. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks you guys so much. I appreciate you. You got it. Take it easy, man. That's a hospital chaplain. That's a, they go to what the, it, what when people that? are sick and they're a chaplain? Yeah, so, they're, yeah. Like a cat, they're like Catholic, right? Yeah, I had oh. one that came by when I was in the hospital for like 10 days. I'm come, not familiar. Come in and, what do you I think um, they're, they're, they, 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 they help with the religious side. And, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, just kind of help. Uh, I didn't know be that. there. A lot of times, people are in the hospital by themselves. Their yeah. family. So spiritual guidance and pastoral care. So, um, so they could they they represent. I, th I mean, the ones I'm familiar with are typically Catholic, and they'll come in and do um, what's that called? Uh, uh, the, the sacrament of the the sick or the the, the last rites or whatever. They'll come in and they'll do pray, mm -hmm. you know, prayer and stuff like that for you. So oh, that's, that's a tough sure. job because you're dealing with sick, yeah. really sick people. No so idea. For sure it's yeah, he's in a good place. He's going to be fine, especially oh, yeah. switching to symmetry. Yeah, I expect him to get stronger from the skill acquisition. Oh, I'm glad the conversation went that way yeah. because you know I didn't expect, I don't expect him to keep his deadlift, squat, barbell stuff up like that because he is he's uh, he's performing very high level and we're going to cut his calories pretty pretty low. To think that you're going to gain is is not realistic at all. But if you never train unilateral, and the first time he goes to do a unilateral movement, he's going to be pretty weak because he hasn't trained that way. Remember a uh, good example, Ben Pollock, right? Yeah, Our lunges. buddy could do like 700 pounds on his back on a barbell squat, then he goes to do like 145 lunges, and he was all over the place, right? But the beauty of that is there is a possibility for him to see himself get stronger through that program because it's so novel. So mm -hmm. great, great, great. That's a hack uh, that I used to do when I would go on a cut. I'd change everything up. Always. So I had no point of reference. Always. <laughs> so I don't know yeah, I was yeah. getting weaker, stronger. Better whatever. psychologically, for That's sure. Right. Our next caller is Eduardo from Utah. Eduardo, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, what's up, everyone? What's How up, are man? you? Good, good. What's happening? Hey, uh, so real quick, thanks to you guys uh, for your content. Uh, I've been using your content, you know, in the last few months. Well, I've been consuming your content for years, but as an aspiring personal trainer, you know, I've been programming my wife's workouts for a few months and using a lot of your content as the, uh, the gold standard. So she's been seeing a lot of good results just from focusing on strength training. And I really appreciate that. Awesome. Great. Cool. Cool. So I'll get into my question. Uh, I have some background information too. Uh, I'm active duty military as a bomb technician, and I'm under a lot of stress constantly. I did not realize how much stress I was under for the last six years of my career until now because I'm getting out of the military. I have found it difficult to relax, unwind, and be more present slash mindful in the things that I do. This has affected my gains as well as my personal life. <clears throat> I always seem to be in a hurry or look at life as a box to check off every day. I have been able to progressively overload and gain about 10 pounds of muscle since 2020. I'm six foot one at uh, 185 pounds. Um, ultimately though, the stress is stifling my recovery and my well-being. Um, I've already been on a no social media cleanse for like about a year. Uh, I, I read before bed. I try to dim the lights and I do some stretching every once in a while. What are some techniques you recommend for me so I can fully maximize my recovery by lowering stress. 
Right. That's crazy because yeah. that doesn't seem like that'd be a stressful job Stupid. at all. Stupid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's got to be crazy. Yeah. That's got to be up there in like the up. top five. That's got to be the most <laughs> insane. stressful. Yeah. You know, uh, if, if we look at the data, so it's going to be different from person to person uh, in terms of what's going to affect you in the most positive way. But the data, the data shows sleep is the top. Sleep mm -hmm. is the most impactful thing on affecting um, in, in a positive way stress. Um, and all the things that go along with that, right? Getting sunlight first thing in the morning, avoiding stimulants like caffeine or not having it past, let's say noon, you're doing the night routine, which is pretty good. That seems to help. So that's number one with what the data shows. Number two is, and the data's points in this direction is a spiritual practice. This could be meditation. Mm -hmm. This could be religion. Uh, some type of a practice and it's a practice. See, the reason why I say it's a practice is because it's something that needs to be done on a regular basis, like exercise. It's not easy to just get into it. Yeah. Well, you, you just can't be like, mm -hmm. Oh, I'm spiritual. It's gotta be like a practice that you do on a regular basis. But basically it's a 40,000 foot view of things. It's a way to find yourself present. And what it does is it, you know, it doesn't, it's not like your life will change, but the way you view and process life tends to change. But like exercise, this is the, this is what I found. The challenge with it is, you know, it's like when, when I used to train clients, they'd work out for a couple of weeks. I'd be like, well, how, how come I'm not seeing crazy results? It's like, we well, got to do it for a little longer. You got to be consistent. It's the same thing with like meditation or any other spiritual practice. It's a slow process, but then it starts to snowball. And I'm so I'm just letting you know what the data shows, that the, those are the sure. two biggest, most impactful things. We could talk about, you know, supplements and all that stuff. But the data, like, it didn't even come close to the two things that I just mentioned. Well, you could, you could also, I, I shared this with you, Sal, the other day that I was really fascinated by this. It, it was a, a Bible verse, and I'm, I'm going to mess it up, but I'm going to give you the point of it. Uh, because there was some recent research that came out to support this in regards to when somebody is feeling anxious, one of the best things that you can do to calm the mind down is actually to do uh, gratitude. So they, they both they both operate from that place of the brain. And so you can't have one with the other. So if you're feeling anxious and you sit down and you start to write things that you're grateful for in your life, you'll mm -hmm. you'll force the brain to shift away from what it is that's causing you anxious, whether it's work stress going on or what, whatever it may be. If you shift over to being focused on the things that you're grateful for, it'll pull it'll force you to come out of that. So if you're not like a, a religious person or that doesn't sound like something you want to do, simply doing that alone at night would probably be a really good practice. Just And I, I've done this for a while to test this, and it is incredible. It's just before bed, I sit down and I five things I'm grateful mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I like to try and process something through the day, whether that was something that actually happened or maybe an over high level thing that my wife and kids or whatever, but I'll just, I'll write them down and writing down about those five things then shifts my brain over into all that stuff. And all of a sudden drifts me away from whatever it was that I was feeling anxious. This could work miracles at night. Yeah. I think the gratitude is amazing. And I think that's something that, uh, you know, I've, I've had to learn how to like systematically take time out to do that. One thing that I have shared on the show before though, uh, in terms of being able to get into that mindset, be, become more present. Cause I struggled a lot with, with carrying a lot of stress continuously and just, you know, sort of buckling, bearing down and, and sort of weathering the storm all the time. Like it was just something like my go-to was to internalize it. Uh, and so I don't know if you relate to that at all, but what, one thing that really helped me was breathing practices, but then taking, you know, something like a cold plunge and, uh, applying it because for me to sit in, in cold water, um, I found out right away that I can't bear down. You can't tense up. You can't, you know, apply a lot of those same methods that you used to use towards like when, when you're facing stressful encounters, you have to relax and release. And once you learn how to re re relax and release, um, you could sit in there for so much longer. And it, it I guess, uh, for me, it, it was just like a, an aha moment where I was like, wow, I just need to figure out how to not bear down and to, to just breathe my way through and, and find that calm state. And to be able to find that calm state faster really helped me then to then apply these other practices 
um, you know, later on and, and figure out how to be more present, how to like, you know, focus on gratitude and do all that. But I needed that sort of like shock and awe of, of how to, to be able to be more present. It was something I had to learn. I love that advice because I had a similar experience with the cold plunge. It, uh, I remember it, the first time we did it, it shocked the fuck out of me and I couldn't be in there longer than about a minute and got to a place where I could comfortably sit in there for five plus minutes. And that had everything to do with what Justin was saying was being able to relax your body, relax your mind and not tense up, which seems so counter to the initial feeling of that shock of you wanting to defend and training that system to be able to do that. It, it is only going to help you in these, these situations at night. And that seems so extreme, but training, that's what training is about. Like training at that extreme level will then allow you to apply it with just simple mental things that are kind of flying in your head that you can't get out of relaxing, shifting your brain over into a gratitude type of focus mindset, and then calming yourself down before you go to bed. And then we didn't talk about any of this stuff, but of course there's things that could supplement and help. Like mm -hmm. I don't, you there, something that did wonders for me. I didn't know this until after the fact that I was magnesium deficient. Over 60% of the population is magnesium deficient. Um, the mellow that would, that by Ned, when I drink that at night relaxes and calms me down. It's a, it's night and day difference from when that, and if you're somebody who is deficient in that, you'll notice a difference from something like that. They also have sleep products with droppers, that can help before you go okay. there. But at, I, I'm glad we started with the other stuff first because I think trying to to or to do it naturally is going to be the biggest rock and help you the most. And then if you add those other things like supplementation, chamomile or something at night, ashwagandha, some of these things like that will help that process too. Yeah, I think the key, regardless of what uh, method you choose, meditation, prayer, you know, whatever practice, it's, it's a different operating system than you're used to. So it's not going to feel natural and it's not going to feel effective until you get better at it. So it's going to be a practice. So in other words, you're going to suck at it yep. until you start to get better <laughs> at it. So, so you have to understand yeah. that because I didn't get that. Like when I would try this stuff, I'm like, this sucks. I don't notice anything. Yeah. And then I had an instructor tell me like, would you say that to somebody who just started strength training that they, 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 it was hard for them to mm -hmm. see strength gains. They said, well, no, I said, they got to practice it. Like it's like, that's why they call it a practice. So whatever you do, you're literally going to have to like, okay, got to do my thing and get into it. And like, well, I don't notice much from it. Let me do it again. Let me do it again. And then over time you start to, it starts to become more of an automatic thing that you can tap into. And then you get better at it. Like with any practice. So for the time being, you're going to have to schedule whatever you're going to do. You have to consistently schedule it, whatever the schedule looks like for you, whether it be two days a week, three days a week, five minutes a day, whatever, and do it regularly, consciously. And it's going to take a little while before you really start to reap the benefits. Yeah. The, uh, the funny part is that now I get to go home and tell my wife he's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or if you really want to piss she's her gonna, off, she's going to love that. If you really want to piss her off, you could present her the information. Like you heard it for the first time. Like, Oh dude, you know what I think is going to work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, she, she says I do that anyway. She's like, you always only listen to other men when they tell you things. I'm like, Okay. Wait, are you married to my wife? Yeah, yeah I was just saying. That's sounds, weird. This sounds familiar. That's a that's a very familiar thing. Uh, yeah. But, but, but well, give it a thanks, shot, guys. I really appreciate it. You yeah. got it, man. Good yeah, luck. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good luck, Eduardo. Yeah. I I could not imagine a bomb like going over to fucking do a bomb. Bro, yeah, dude. <laughs> like I don't even like a jack in the box the like most toy. Stressful you know what I mean? job you could possibly. Yeah, have. Dude, yeah. Remember those toys you'd bring in and it pop out? Like I don't even like that. <laughs> I mean, I don't. Go, I don't think they're. I mean, I don't know off the top of my head. I can't think of something that would be more stressful from that. Just the anticipation of the the the, the possibility. Yeah, bro. Unless it's some claustrophobic job or something where you're just confined in a tight space but even then it's not the potential for something to blow up bro i know people don't like, like to be around balloons because they, they don't know what's gonna happen <laughs> you, you know what's what interesting though is i would th you would think though to do that and to, and to do it consistently and be good at it that you would have to kind of learn those skill sets yeah but what happens it. is yeah. he does he's able to turn it on in extremely stressful situations so he outside needs, of that so he needs more like it was because the just low level stress he just like doesn't it doesn't switch it's on it's not the same bro it's like it's like uh you ever see people who seek out crazy shit 
because it makes him feel calm. Yeah. Like there's athletes that are like yeah. that, you know? Yeah. Um, well, that's what I mean. I mean that his his day-to-day stuff is too low of a stress level that he doesn't switch over into what that that – he that, probably can't. He doesn't know how to like. And okay, it's like, and he's almost he's like seeking. He's yeah. almost seeking something more crazy. Bro, I used Maybe to train, put a bomb under your. Bed. I used to train ER doctors that they. That's how they focused. Was when the shit hit the fan. Yeah. And when they didn't do that, they just couldn't deal with it. So it's a totally different situation. Switching from that to like being a civilian. Yeah. That's tough, man. That's, that's tough, man. Next caller is Nadim from Texas. Nadim, what's up, man? How can we help you? What's happening? Well, 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 if it isn't mine, Tom, hey, hey, the number hey. one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast in the world, hey, and possibly hey. known universe. How'd you know that? <laughs> and the universe. <laughs> so what's going on? in this galaxy. <laughs> so, um, all right. I've been working out seriously since about 2017. I'm 23, year old, 23 years old right now. And shortly after I started, I found you guys from Bradley Martin. Mm. And... Having no knowledge, I just began lifting heavy and pushing really hard. At, at the time, I was, I was yeah, 17, 18 years old, and I was taking some hardcore pre, the kind with the DMAA. And then I messed around with a little bit of SARMs, some Carterine MK677, and some RAD40. Mm. And um, I eventually hurt my lower back and my shoulder. And I started following your guys' advice and have been treating lifting like a skill and not as, you know, torture. Yeah, so I, I, cool. I maxed out at 375 on deadlift, 285 on squat, 225 on bench, and 135 on overhead press. Good numbers. Okay. And so I've done the standard RGB and have Prime and Prime Pro. I've started to try and push strength again after all these years of practicing form and movement. And something always seems to come up where I can't push the weight higher and I feel like I need to go back and correct my form. And I feel it just kind of takes me out of the groove of trying to go heavy and any help would be wonderful. I don't track my protein numbers right now, but I know I'm consuming a lot more than usual. And I feel like I've been in the maintenance slash building amount. And yeah, I, I know I need to start tracking numbers but uh, at the moment, I've just been kind of writing down my movement for the day and the foods that I'm eating. And I'm 6'2", about 195 pounds weighed uh, when I wake up. So, yeah. Nadim, I got some, I got good news and bad news. So I'm ready. The bad news is, I mean, you did this at 17 and 18. You did everything backwards. So <laughs> yeah. you went straight into the crazy, the craziest shit you could buy online. <laughs> You didn't focus a lot on programming your workouts or really understanding diet. So you did it all backwards. So the stuff that you did, uh, you know, might have affected your hormones in a negative way. Who knows? You probably recovered okay. You were so young. Um, DMAA, super strong stimulant, not even legal anymore. SARMs, you know, they'll, they'll stop testosterone production. RAD, you know, 140 has been shown to have some pretty toxic uh, effects on the liver and stuff like that. So I hope you're not doing that anymore. But the good news oh, is no, this. Sir. Okay, the good news is this. Proper workout programming and diet is going to give you better gains than you got with shitty programming and not looking at your diet with SARMs. So you're going to get better results if you if you're if you're better about your diet, you start tracking and you follow some good workout program. Let's talk about the workout program here uh for a second. I know you have our RGB bundle that's great, but because of what you're saying with some of the injuries and stuff like that and pain. Symmetry. Yep, I would go map symmetry. I think you have some stability and some probably right-left um, imbalances, and I think that that'll be the perfect program for you. Yeah, that's going to address a lot of those problems. Now, diet-wise, we got to start tracking and figure out where you're at. Like, I never, at least the protein. Yeah, I would never try. I don't trust that you said you think you're eating a lot of protein because you have no idea, mm -hmm. and, and you're always going to be off. I'm off, and I've been doing this for a long time. When I start to track, I'm always surprised. Like, oh, I thought I was eating this, and now I'm eating this. So um, it, I want you to track, see what you're eating now on a regular basis. If you want to gain, bring it up by about 500 calories. If your body weight's at about 195 and you want to gain 10 pounds of lean body mass, I would say aim for about 205 pounds, excuse me, 205 grams of protein. Mm -hmm. About 500 calories to 800 calories above what you're eating now or averaging now. With a good program like Map Symmetry, get good sleep. 
Okay, make sure you get really, really good sleep. Um, so prioritize that. And you're going to take creatine. That would be the one supplement I'd say you take if you don't take it now. And you're going to see yourself progress better than you did with uh, those other the other the other methods that you did before. Yeah, I think symmetry just being novel alone is going to give you some nice new strength gains. It's going to be different than the the traditional barbell back squat bench press overhead press stuff. With so you're going to see some great some get great gains just from that. If there was two like minimum symmetry and track your protein, those yeah. two things alone. If, if you looked at like all of the advice that Sal's giving you, that those are like the track uh, track your protein make sure you consistently hit every day follow symmetry every bare, day though. yeah every day so bare, bare, that's the bare minimum if you do that alone i guarantee you're already going to see some good results if you also yep. get detailed track the calories and make sure you're you're staying 500 or so above like you're saying i think that's just going to add to that but the bare minimum those two things and i promise you're going to see good results so i do kind of have a caveat to the uh, to symmetry i did a um, I think it's the DEXA skin where you stand on the little scale thing and yeah. you like hold your arms up. Yeah, and um, I got the results back and everything oh, was body. really um pretty symmetrical off by just uh like point whatever percent. Like, doesn't matter. Not much at all. No, it doesn't okay. matter. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it's about it's, the recruitment patterns. Exactly. So the okay. recruitment patterns are what we're looking for. The novel stimulus is what we're looking for. Rarely do you see massive discrepancies with hypertrophy when you see that, then then it's really bad, right? Yeah. So if I if I see someone's right to left, and their right arm is a quarter inch bigger or half an inch super bigger, super Now we're like, oh, we're really down the path of an imbalance. But if mm. you were to go do uh, unilateral exercises, you're going to see a difference between right and left, especially if you always train bilaterally. So really, it's more about novel stimulus. It's about central nervous system adaptation, and then what that can lead to. That's why I said symmetry, and also because. We see that you followed our RGB bundle, which mm -hmm. a lot of, except for maybe uh, performance, most of it's bilateral type training. Mm -hmm. um, so in the past, um, I don't know if this has any relevance, but I I did break my left collarbone, and then on my right hand, um, I don't know what this bone is called, but they call it a boxer's fracture usually. Yeah. And so I noticed some grip issues with my right hand, and sometimes when it's um, when I grip too tightly, it, um, it, it just hurts. So is that maybe I can strengthen up my, my forearms and it shouldn't hurt as much or something like that. Scale back on the masturbating. Yep. <laughs> That's right. You gotta, stop, use, you gotta stop, use both hands. Stop you know? doing, yeah, it, stop doing it so aggressive. That's how Adam broke his arm. <laughs> so listen, apply the stranger method. Yeah. yeah. Listen, it's, it, it, it should start to balance out, uh, with the program like symmetry unless there's a, a, a real issue with the way that you healed, in which case I would do, I would work with a correctional exercise specialist. Um, so, and what can happen sometimes with the boxer's fracture is the, the bones as they fracture, then they kind of overlap and then they heal in this kind of staggered position. And that can mm -hmm. cause some issues uh, with grip. Um, however, when it comes to the hands, uh, the the compensations and adaptations are pretty remarkable. I mean, I've seen people with some pretty interesting issues balance out pretty well just through some slow, consistent training. So it, it, I don't think it'll be that bad of a problem just based on the fact that you can already work out now. And I think mm -hmm. symmetry would address it on its own. But if it doesn't, then I would seek out the the help of a specialist because then, then you're talking something really individualized. Okay. All right. Well, we'll send you symmetry. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Stop, um, stop taking storms. Got, <laughs> yeah. No, that's uh, my friend and I were too, too gung ho about it. And we even talked, I know you guys talked about DNP recently and no, I, don't. I, I, yeah, no, yeah, I know. Don't, don't ever do that stuff. But we were talking about it at that young age and I'm so <laughs> glad we didn't get into that. Bro. That's, that's way too much. That you're was me at your age. Yeah, yeah, you're good. You're I good. I was bro. like that at 18. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, one real quick question that I had is, uh, so I just became a personal trainer with through NASM and I was wondering if, uh, through NCI or whoever else, if there's another, um, certification that you guys would recommend that I start working on for person to be a, to be a better trainer and coach yes. NCI. Oh, be. NCI dude. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, then, and then we're working on something we got coming yeah, down we, the pipe. We got things in the future for you for sure. Yeah. That's right. Roll All in right. roll in CI and then we got we'll something. Tight. 
Yeah, Doug, maybe we can email him our links because I know we have some like discounts and stuff through NCI. Yeah, we can okay. do that for sure. All right, Nadine. All right, well, thank you, guys. Keep you, doing what you're doing. You got it, man. All right, brother. Thank you. I, I, I specifically, I remember at that age, I, I had, I swear, I had a friend, bro. I had He's a in fam- the experimental phase. Bro, I had a family yeah. friend. He was a bodybuilder, Jack guy, and he told me, literally, he goes, this is what you got to do. Lift full body three days a week, eat a lot of protein, get good sleep. And I literally thought, you don't want to tell me yeah. what to do. Because you're, you you're holding out on me. You're, and he, his advice was right. It was so annoying. But this is exactly the shit that I would do. I'd go take every supplement. And SARMs didn't exist back then, but you better believe I would have bought every SARM I could yeah. at that age. And it's backwards because it's not going to have the impact. I had. A, I, I remember this too. I had a trainer that worked for me. No, sorry. Sales guy that worked for me, one of the gyms I managed. And he went on the most insane steroid cycle, but his workout and diet sucked so bad that you could barely tell. Yeah. That anything happened. Yeah. And he's like, it's fake stuff. It's fake stuff. And this other guy who was on the same stuff who knew what he was doing, it was very different. What was that? So the pre, it was it's not ephedra. What, what was it? DMAA. So is that the stuff they make dynamite out of? No, that's no, the DMT no, one. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or what? DNP. DNP. Oh, that's yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. DMAA, I actually found some as a research chemical because I'd never tried it. And yeah. I took it. Eh, legit. I see why they banned it. <laughs> it's a drug, bro. <laughs> I see why it's illegal. I figured you'd know I know. It's it. crazy stuff. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out some of our free fitness guides. They cost nothing. Download them all. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. <laughs> <laughs>